Hello. <clears throat> I'm assuming y'all can see me. What's up? It's Jay Sanders. I'm doing a live stream. This is Jay Ramble just talking about whatever, really. Um, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I'll start. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I'll start with like, like a, a quick announcement about um, just the fact that YouTube is not really sending everyone um, updates. You know, updates on whatever I upload, whether it be a mix or a single song or, or whatever. Even with the bell turned on, I've noticed that I've, I've gotten plenty of people asking me where I've been. I'm so, I've, I've still been active. Um, even to the point where, like, uh, around the springtime, I was uploading, like, one or two songs every day, damn near. Uh, so... It's really hard to tell what exactly is going on there. So I would just say keep the just like check the channels like video section every I don't know every couple of weeks or so see what's new. Um, and of course I would check to see if it's even showing you um, alerts or anything right off the bat or not. Some people say yes. A lot of people seem to say no. So. There's that. Um, shit. Uh, <clears throat> last stream months ago at this point, I mentioned uh, Gorilla's first album and didn't elaborate on a particular point. If you like Dan the Automator, uh, or if you don't know who he is, he produced that first album. And so definitely check out uh, Delchon 3030. Um, so if you if you like if you like <laughs> gorillas, definitely check out Deltron Thirty Thirty. I mean, you probably already have. They're pretty huge in like kind of the underground hip hop world. And of course, Del the, the Homo Sapien, who did tracks on there, is he's a rapper for them. Yeah. What else? Okay. Weird copyright shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about some of the <clears throat> some of the weird stuff going on with copyrights. Um, some, you know, the, a few mixes over the years not being able to, not, me not being able to have it on YouTube. Because when I do, every now and then there will be one that get that just gets blocked, won't show up anywhere. So then I'll have to make like a, a five second second video that says, "Oh, here's the mix cloud link" or whatever. And what's what's unusual is the fact that it will be blocked or claimed copyright claimed by a label who a label for example which would later on um, you, you find out later on that there is another mix that they didn't block for a song that was in there you know another song from their label. Uh, like, for example, Warp, Warp Records. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I, I think I tried to uh, upload an Aphex Twin song, either that or it was in a mix. And it got blocked by Warp. But then um, there was another one that I guess had a... It, it was a somewhat older one. Yeah, it, yeah, it was, was it was one of those tracks on I think I care because you do, which is also on Warp, and that mix is still up. That one's called the Science of Sound. That mix, it's all like '90s electronic stuff, and as far as I know, that one's still up. So it was just odd how some stuff stays up and others don't. You know what I mean? So it's from the same label. Uh, another example: uh, edit has an album called Crying Over Pros for No Reason. If you've heard of the Glitch Mob, you've heard of Edit. He's one half of those guys. So I put his full album up years ago, I think like 2016, and it's still up. But then I had a mix called um, Meanwhile, Meanwhile with another song from Planet Moo Records, because Edit's album was on there too. And that one got 
that one got copyright blocked. It's silly. <laughs> I just thought I'd bring it up. Anything else? Oh, yeah, yeah. I guess my my main workaround is just I'll go to the version on Mixcloud or you know say something like that. I put up an, an announcement. Um, whenever that happens, it's every now and then, like realistically, but sometimes it gets a little irritating. A little irritating. Uh, oh yeah, that 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 one mix, that vaporwave mix. Has I don't I think stayed up for like a good week or two and, and t until it just got and blocked out of nowhere. Um, yeah, sometimes that'll happen where a label I guess will figure it out way later though. You um, <clears throat> that you sampled something because yeah, it's a, the copyright ID system is noticing stuff like th that too, like slowed down songs from like a, a sample, like a vaporwave song or, or whatever it is. So it caught, it caught somebody on that mix that sampled Kenny G and it got taken the fuck down. So thanks, Kenny G. And then, of course, yeah, there's still a video for that one. Up on, or, or, or the kind of the announcement video for it that just says, oh, here's the, the fucking download. There's that at least. I try. Yeah, after that one, I, I even like replaced it with a version of it that didn't have in it, have it in it, and then I think it for that it, it blocked it for something else that it didn't block it for the fucking first time. So I don't know what the fuck's going. On. Um, it's been going on for a while. Okay, so let me content. Thank you guys. So, what else? Okay, uh, all right, so I've gotten, you know, a humble amount of comments here, here and there, uh, from people, well, they'll come up on, they'll come to a song or whatever, and upload it on my channel, and they'll comment, what, what does this have to do with Vaporwave, or something like that, which never made sense to me, because, because I, I guess they never have looked at my, my videos section or my channel at all and i've only seen it or just following youtube's kind of like recommended train where it just shows them the vaporwave mixes and nothing else that's never been the only thing on here never will be it's 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 a variety channel uh, first and foremost vaporwave and uh, all the retro stuff is yeah a big part of it but it's never been all of it uh experimental hip-hop and electronic has always been um a, a pretty big thing that I put on here too. Same, same with mixes, electronic mixes, all that stuff. Yeah. Okay. What else do I want to talk about? All right. I'm going to talk about the mixes I did this year. <clears throat> so I, I guess I'll start with, yeah, I'll probably start with the vaporwave mixes to kind of, especially to kind of tie into what uh, somebody asked just now in the chat. He said, "What John wrote? Would Ace's stuff be like, like considered?" Um, Ace, that's a E A S K. He's a hip hop producer. Um, he's is kind of in this group, or not group, but like um, collect collective or what do, you, what do you call it of people who who make music uh which which is uh, the term has soul hop has kind of been thrown around um or it's basically sort of like almost not necessarily uh jay dilla but but that style of hip-hop and beat making but mixed with the 80s retro or early 90s r and b stuff um just it just really it was really messing with that it, chopping it up <laughs> it just it was really fucking with it and <clears throat> adding beats is just it's just very loopy so yeah i would say soul hop is um be a good term for that kind of thing 
Low Ranger is another one that does it. Um, who else? Tape Cop. Vector Graphics, sort of. Yeah, his stuff isn't as choppy, but it, but it, but it's definitely like hip hop beats mixed with like a lot of R and B, a lot of R and B style, uh, of music. He, very fuzzy too. He he likes this kind of lo fi, um, very FM static type of style, like in the background. Hey, what's up? All right, so yeah, yeah, I'll talk about uh, a couple of the mixes. One of the newer ones that I did, <clears throat> I think it was, yeah, during the summer, it's called Nine All Night. Nine All Night. And that one, I think it was about, it's about an hour long. So Ace is, is in it, <laughs> of course, and uh, everybody from from the kind of soul hop world of, of vaporwave. So that one's a, a vaporwave and soul hop mix. Uh, before the, like, like this is, this is the kind of stuff that has always been here and there on SoundCloud here, there, everywhere, but not as much at the time, like say like 2016, 17 and so on. I wasn't always able to find like a shitload of that kind of style to make it, to put a lot of it in its own mix. Like a lot of it has been sprinkled in mixes throughout, uh, sprinkled in mixes throughout the year, throughout the years. I mean, but yeah. So, so I did two soul hop mixes this year. So nine all night and can you believe it? And it's it's, it's been really awesome that I've I've been finding more and more of this stuff, which means it's been growing more and more. <laughs> oh, if you've heard an uh, actor, he he's another another big one in that kind of movement. That's spelled triangle K T R. Yeah. Uh, so it, yeah, there's there's all kind of stuff in there. So yeah, it, yeah, it, it's it, that I found so much recently. Uh, kind it kind of tells you just how much is growing. Really, um, a lot of art, artists like a, a Ridic Ridicchio, um, all, all kinds of new people keep popping up so it's good to see this movement keep you know moving really channel select yeah uh thank you michael michael i, I forgot to mention him channel select is definitely a lot of his stuff definitely falls into the, the soul hop cat category he's in there he's been in most of my mixes over the past couple of years the vaporwave ones anyway Yeah, yeah. Hey, he knows. Yeah. Yeah, Nightgrave is a is a, is another great uh soul hop musician. Um you've definitely heard him in and uh plenty of my mixes for sure. Especially like more of the hip hop oriented ones, because there's so hot. Yeah, because yeah, there's there's vaporwave examples, um, like old hip hop and R and B. But then there's soul hop. There's a particular brand or, or a particular set of things that kind of go with it. Particular a certain choppiness that, um, and just a little bit more erratic than like. Or the standard style vaporwave, you know what I mean? Active presence, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk about him. Because uh, I also want to talk about uh, the, the last uh, the last couple of mixes I did. A, a vaporwave mix, a vaporwave and synth mix called uh, Pixel Perfect. Active presence is in there. Um, and then... Vector Graphics is, of course, is in there too. I forgot if it was him or if it was other his other moniker is the first track. And who else? High Hills is in there. Uh, yeah, yeah, just 
all kinds of people. Um, uh, Lost Traveler, uh, My Dreamy Adventure. I always try to get him in there as much as possible. And for the most part, he's active. Uh, not really with albums so much, but like sing singles, he'll, he'll come, come up with some here and there. Um, I was like having some of that in there for sure. So active presence. His he he falls a lot of his stuff falls in in the soul hop. A lot of the stuff falls into vaporwave. A lot of the stuff call, falls into synth wave. A lot of his stuff falls into. <laughs> It's just create like crazy, just experimental electronic in general. Uh, him and Boreal Network and Harmonicers and Prism Age uh, right now, uh, um, I would say, are some of the main artists that I have been really able to squeeze into all kinds of uh, mixes and stuff, not, not just Vaporwave, but like all of them. So, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about uh, another mix, mix I did a uh, couple months ago. Yeah, it was towards the end of the summer called Stereo Glad. So I did Stereo Mad, um, I had two of them, or one last year and one the year before. So this is Stereo Glad. It, it's just more uh, crazier uh, <laughs> kinds of experiment experimental electronic um no particular set theme other than it's just kind of a lot of it all of it pretty much is kind of wacky in general it goes here and there and everywhere and active presence uh prism ages moniker fowey and bow real networks moniker cone distance all i have tracks from all three of them in there oh and i forgot to mention yeah active presence is in that that other vaporwave make mix that I've mentioned uh, twice, yeah, actually. There, there are a couple people in there that uh, I was able to get uh, two tracks in. So, I have one. All right, what else I want to talk about? Yeah, I love Active Presence's uh, song, Superman. I believe that was the one that was in the, the last Vaporwave mix. Yeah, Pixel Perfect. And then uh, another more somewhat quieter song, but still wacky nonetheless, a track from him right after it. Um, but yeah, yeah, back to, sorry, back to Stereo Glad. Uh, his track Nike's is in there. Um, it's very synthy, but it also is very, very crazy. It's all kinds of things. Um, I'd, I'd say it would, it would really like fit into an action movie. Um, but yeah, yeah, a lot of the stuff goes into hip hop territory. A lot of it goes into more action film theme and type territory. Something you would see in like in the eighties, uh, Schwarzenegger movie or, or something like that. Um, they, which I, I I've always been into artists that you can really they have styles that is just super flexible to to put into all kinds of mixes. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Okay. What else I want to talk about? Who, who else is in Stereo Glad? I put a track from Delroy Edwards in there. Um, as a lesser, is a lesser known track I found from a, an older Benji B mix that he did. It was really, it was somewhat almost creepy in a way. Is some of the tracks. They were on there because there was an 18 karat affair track on there too and i ended up like looking at the date i think he, that mix that he that delroy edwards did came out at least what like 2013 or 14 and that was at least a year or so before i started doing any vaporwave mixes or even like really discovered uh 18 karat affair just yet yeah the track yeah he had a song called a uh, jewelry on the floor that was on there there was that. There was a hype, a hype William stuff. Just all kinds of shit that uh, just really interested me. It just interesting to me, all that stuff and so many of kind of exclusives 
from him just seeing the context of like 2013 you know what i mean there's a bunch of different stuff like that um that sort of ha has a lot of that style going before it really became before it really started trending you know what i mean another one is a it was a mix called smoke hustle i think that what was that like 20 like 2009 or 10 at least yeah it was a mix called smoke hustle from a guy kind of matthew david uh it used to be on uh flying lotus's label for a while yeah you know brain feeder and so so he had a mix on brain feeder it was called smoke hustle and the whole thing is just is literally slowed down funk so there are a few that you might actually like end up recognizing in like vaporwave songs or um a lot of them are like i'd say that you're somewhat like famous uh just kind of the 80s funk and soul tracks a slow down it's only like nine minutes it has this really nice little five feel to it interesting seeing all this <laughs> um these things kind of happen happening before it really happens it's the best way to explain it. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so Delroy, <laughs> sorry, Delroy's is in there in uh, Stereo's lab. Uh, Yalk DX is in there. Uh, used to be known as Ghost Work. That's his new kind of name. And then I got Sana Raw in there at the very end. A longer song. Uh, that one is another lesser known one uh, from one of his mixes. Is a, a mix that was exclusive to his own channel. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention Sana Raw and Matthew David have they've they've done a couple mixes too. I forget one of one of the names, but it it was a lot like Smoke Hustle as well. Where a lot of it had that super uh, lo-fi kind of um, stuff that's, that examples a lot of uh, 80s soul and things like that, kind of funk in general. And that was at least what 2011, <laughs> so a while back. But yeah, uh, the Sun the Sun of Raw stuff is incredible. If uh, if you ever heard, um. The, the game Hotline Miami, then you've heard of him. He's had a, a couple tracks in there, uh, like Horse Steppin'. Oh, I forget the name of the other one. But uh, he he's another guy that is just does all kinds of all kinds of styles, all kinds of stuff. Uh, a lot of this is very free form from then to now. Um, a lot of it is very it, it's on the very like tropical side of things. Like even though he's from Texas, he likes going to Morocco and the, the, well, Beth, the Bahamas. I think all all kinds of these different like uh, islands and tropical places. Um, and, and he's he's usually with a band, usually like a trio. And not only is it tropical, but it also falls sometimes into Western territory he, he gets very twangy with his guitar sometimes and it just really throws everything out there um yeah really good stuff um saddle on the, the of the increase is a great album mm, what else i think there's one i i, I know i have the picture in my head but i'm, I'm trying to think of the actual name of it It's the one that Mahalo is on. But really, like all of his albums are great. Um, the, okay, that one was called On Patrol. <laughs> yeah, On Patrol. But yeah, they, they definitely check out all of it. Um, super crazy stuff. Definitely <clears throat> kind of a track for everyone, I would say. Mm -hmm. Oh, and okay, 
the Sunaraw, Flying Lotus, Matthew David, Toro Ima, all of the <laughs> all these fucking people um, are on have had mixes. Um, it all, it usually one uh, more than one on a, on a website called Dub Lab. I think it's also like a radio station in California um, too. Uh, it plays a lot of indie stuff of all kinds. And so it includes like experimental electronic and hip hop. So Flying Lotus has quite, had quite a lot of stuff on there, and most of it's most of it's still on the website too. And then they got their mix cloud section, you know, kind of a version of it too. I think a lot of it's on there. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, Summerall has, has a bunch on there, and Matthew David. Yeah, his Smoke Hustle was his mix was featured on there. Yeah, all, all types of shit. That that's a great website to if you like mixes. Really good to start if you if you haven't heard a whole lot of uh, the crazier side of hip hop or even electronic, but then, but then of course, even if you already have, uh, it'll definitely introduce you to stuff that maybe uh, or artists that you that maybe like flew by you that you haven't stumbled on yet. Uh, mixers are always great for that. Compilations are always great for it too. Okay. All right. So next up, I'll talk about the compilation that I <laughs> that I put together. Uh, yeah, I put I put together a compilation uh, called Striking Features. Also during the summer, somewhat busy summer for <laughs> uploads and stuff on this channel. Uh, but yeah, it's Striking Features. I think it's about 20, 20 or twenty one tracks. Two of my own uh, vaporwave uh, tracks are on there as well they're exclusive ones and um i better bring it up so that i don't really miss anyone i'm really like stoned and so i don't want to forget too much you know <laughs> yeah it, it was it was something that i kind of had planned about a month or so in advance where i just uh went on SoundCloud and just asked a bunch of people, um, people that I featured, all of these people that I've talked to before, whether it be them thanking me or me just coming to them and say thank you or ask for permission. Um, a, couple, a couple artists before, um, as well as a couple of artists before who have uh, come to me, like I found them through them. Uh, Windows 96 being one, that was a long time ago. Um, he was, a uh, one of his tracks was in my first, uh, compilation. So striking features, this will be, this is, this is the third one of three. So yeah, that first one had Windows 96 in it. And then another person who asked me to check out his stuff was a guy called Costanza. And... I think he actually put something out recently. He he was I, th I think he was on a hiatus for quite a while, but yeah, he was on there on that first one, that first compilation. That was called Sexy Tra <laughs> Sexy Tracks. The second one was called Vibe Surfers. All kinds of people on that on that one too. Uh, Happy Cycler, for example, uh, Vincent Remember. Those are those are a couple other uh, vapor vaporwave artists too. So let's talk about striking features. Um, Ace is on there. We we're talking about them, and actually, a bunch of different people that have been talking about have been on there, um, or on or on there. So th these are all tracks. Like I, I asked them to either be exclusive or ones they haven't put on albums yet. Um, so there are a bunch that, like in the future, you may, may or may not be able to find <laughs> anywhere else. So uh, Active Presence has a track on there too. Fowey, too, that he's a Fowey's Prism Age, basically. That's the first track on there. Um, so did uh, I really got to try to fit, his, fit, in, fit in as much, like, kind of 
um, diverse styles in as I could. So there's plenty of vaporwave and then there's plenty of electronic and then of course like kind of hybrids between the two because active active presence's track on there is it's all made from scratch definitely um but yeah and it, it's it's synth wave but it's all kinds of things i know it's hard to explain but um really danceable i love that one uh high hills has a track on there called mars Modulator, uh, Wavion, he's, an, he's another newer um, synth uh, producer. Midnight Happy is on there. Uh, she's, got one of my, she's got one of my favorite tracks on there called New. Uh, that one is another one uh, all made from scratch as well. Uh, it, but also still, still, maybe to the end, Untrained Deer would also fit into, actually, Actually, no, I, 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 I would say like a decent word for it is like is it vapor. I don't know if it's even a word, but like vapor synth. Where it's synth, 18 Carat Affair is a good example where it sounds, it has that really vaporwave kind of feel, very relaxed, but it, it's mostly made from scratch. My Dreamy Adventure is is on my compilation and uh, channel select more, more people <laughs> that I've been talking about. Um, yeah, channel select, uh, it's got a song called let you go. It's on there. Another really cool kind of choppy one. Um, then there's a un untitled passion. He's got a song called nearby filter waves, untitled passion. You may, it's a newer moniker of, uh, a vaporwave artist, uh, who, who you might know as fat man, Miami. And then, uh, he also goes by another <laughs> hip hop moniker, uh, next sec sec is in like sequence and uh yeah his, his stuff has always been great another one that I've, I've put put on the channel as much as i could for a while so who else tupperwave has a track on there called sunday afternoon and then we got zevra and noga noga heavy systems inc yeah. A Digi, of course. A Lost Traveler, of course. Yeah. Looks like that's all. <laughs> so, yeah, a, a bunch of people. And a, a 21 tracks. So, that whole album or that whole compilation is up on. Uh, it's, a, it's on my uh, kind of compilation label, Dorian Digital. Dorian Digital, and then of course uh, it's on my YouTube channel. Both the individual tracks and the full compilation. Yeah, somebody mentioned Monster Rally just now. Um, somebody, somebody that actually came out with another or a, a new, a new record recently. I love Monster Rally stuff. Have since I've uploaded his stuff, his stuff since like the very beginning of this channel. Um, he, all the stuff that he samples, he I would say he's kind of in the hip hop territory for the most part. Uh, but but he samples all like uh, kind of fifties sixties era um, like exotica tiki lounge <laughs> um, style of music. He, he really yeah he just really works wonders with those kinds of uh, samples for sure. Um, as far as I know, it also really meshes pieces of one song with another song. Uh, Adds all kinds of beats. No, he's 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 a mastermind. So a, he's another one that I've been listening quite to quite a lot recently. That's typically something that I've that I'll do with an artist, and they'll come out with something new. I'll just like I'll listen to that, and then I'll just binge everything else. <laughs> 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 
Have you thought about b making B D and B mixes? Maybe intelligent dub. Yes, it's funny. Oh, it's Mr. Siffles. Okay, Mr. Siffles was the is the main person. Yeah, he he's the main person who really uh, told me or not told me, but really uh, kind of shown me how much bigger uh, of a bigger world of drum and bass uh, that there that there is uh, a lot of the stuff that he was showing me. It the scents that go along with it, they're very ambient, they're very pretty and chillaxed. And of course, the beats are just kind of like loud and crazy. A lot of this stuff, it's um, if it's new, it's usually styled uh, after like the old style of uh, early 90s stuff. Or he'll listen to the stuff from the kind from this just from the early 90s. So, there's there's that is definitely something that uh, I've thought about. Uh, doing a mix on. I've actually kind of been looking for stuff here and there too. Of course, Mr. Sniffled, if you haven't heard um, my mix, Science of Sound, you might like that one. It's it's not really drum and bass, but it's 90s, it's early 90s stuff in general. So so a couple Aphex Twin stuff is in there. <sighs> Who fuck? There's a bunch of people. I'm trying to I'm trying to remember. A couple Boards of Canada tracks. Mm. Kenny Larkin. Kenny Larkin, I think. Fuck, why am I drawing bright blanks? Yeah, just go listen to it. It's great. Of course, I, the, the track lists and stuff are all, are all there. So... So, yeah, definitely. What else do I want to talk about? Okay, visuals. I've been working on visuals. Um, so far, I've put out like four, or or I guess five if you count the uh, the mini mix. The mini mix is kind of um, like a, like sort of a, a test mix, like a much shorter one. It was a, but it's a visual mix, uh, and then of course I got the other four, which is the uh, single tracks. And these are all tracks from a from a mix that I did last year called Late Shifters. It's a vaporwave and synth mix. So I have <laughs> some somewhat oh, what like a quarter way done. I'm not even like halfway finished with the mix. But as I've been making pieces of you know the visuals for each song in that mix, I've been uploading them on YouTube. Um, so. Division from Ali is on there. I, I, the visual I did for that one is it, it's all Night Rider stuff. I just cut up a bunch of clips from the, the show Night Rider uh, with the David Hasselhoff. Uh, really, I, I think really fit with uh, just the fast pacedness of that track. And then uh, a Prism Age visual, or the artist Prism Age and his song uh, Match Dicks. For that one, I, I I found a bunch of like, just a shitload of uh, different PBS uh, like VH, VHS rips. Most of them uh, like eighties, late eighties, a couple early nineties too. So yeah, there's commercial uh, there's commercials in there, uh, stuff from the shows, the P PBS shows like uh, Nature, um, Nova, all that good shit. And then I tried to get kind of repping representation for a, a bunch of different cities because uh, or not cities but like states every state has its own kind of like sort of their own modified version of pbs there's the main channel and then the states kind of uh version where they get to put on a lot of their own uh kind of state-owned shows or you know whatever, whatever you want to call it Yeah, I've, I've I've always loved uh, PBS. Grew grew up with it since I was a kid. <laughs> uh, especially like a, a lot of their like kid stuff because you know, I was a kid growing up watching it. Sesame Street, obviously. Arthur, uh, there's Cyber Chase a little bit later. Um, Wishbone was great. It's just, it's just a shitload of stuff. Thomas the Tank Engine, of course. 
And of course, when I was a kid, that was with Thomas the Tank Engine. They were actually using like toys. If you, I, I, I heard that there was like a new one a couple years ago. So I go on PBS and I was like, they completely kind of like screwed it up because it's all like CGI now. That's not like what it was, <laughs> but whatever. Now I'm just going on about fucking like PBS, but yeah, that 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 was all stuff that I felt really fit into, um, it just really really fit with the song, um, with that track Matchsticks. Um, yeah, the Prism Mage's stuff. Um, the same thing with Bo Real Network, who I mentioned earlier. If you like Boards of Canada, they are very very much in that kind of in that line. Very much in that line of thinking, do a lot of that kind of style. Oriel Network is a very um, kind of video gamey about it, kind of chip tuney. That I definitely notice stuff or styles or types of sense that you would hear in something like a, a Super Nintendo or an NES arcade, any that kind of thing. And then <clears throat> Prism Age. Um, this is very dreamy, dreamy in general. Um, and he, he, he's just super experimental. Just try, tries all kinds of stuff. That was that thing. Okay, so visuals. Yeah, that, that's still just something I got moving along. So that will, it'll be done when it's done, but I, I have been working on it. Then I'm working, right now I've been working on another one for for another song on the, the Late Shifters mix. Called Alpine Bump by Epson. That's the new one, or, or the one that I'm working on right now. So it's all stuff from, again, R&B, uh, uh, the R&B music videos uh, from, from the, eight, the 80s and early 90s. So I've been digging up a lot of that, a lot of it. Um, but the thing is, with that song, it, I'm trying to get a lot of the more romantic kind of clips from music videos in there. And <laughs> I have like, what, maybe like a good 30, 45 seconds worth or worth of it. And then the rest of all of what I had, all those music videos, the pieces of music videos, doesn't really fit with the song. So it's something that I'm not, I would fit into something else. But yeah, it's going along. And then what's the other one I put out? Oh, a song from Actor. It's all uh, 21 Jump Street visuals. Um, that show is just, all of it is just on YouTube. So I cut a bunch of, a, a bunch of different stuff from a bunch of different episodes. And little pieces from the intro too. Have you tried to produce any tracks? Uh, thanks, JV, because I was, I was, I'm actually, that was literally the next thing I was about to mention here in a second. Uh, I think there was one more visual. Oh, yeah. It's a song, I think, uh, it's called Valkovia or something like that. It's from Tragic Sands. That is an all roller games visual. It's all stuff I cut up from <laughs> uh, roller games. Uh, another th show that is just apparently all on YouTube. Officially, too, I think it's from... I forget if it's from ESPN's YouTube channel or, or, or something like that. But yeah, that was an 80s game show. Um, it's like a, a roller skating, like kind of race and score points kind of a game show, but they're all just beating the shit out of each other. Um, they get knocked over the side of the rails. I just think WWE with the roller skates. It's great. <laughs> And I had another one, a thing that I kind of think fit it, <clears throat> and it fit the song a little bit. Yeah, that's the thing I got going on. And the finished product will be out when it's out. I can't, I don't really have a set date because I can kind of be slow with it, especially when I'm juggling other stuff. Um, you know, just with it with college and work and making my own music, which I'm going to talk about now. Somebody asked about it, and uh, yeah, I have been, uh, yeah, I've been producing tracks for, for a while now. 
um, I've been and, and not and I'm at the, right now. I'm not talking about the the, va the vaporwave ones that I do here and there, but the the uh, experimental electronic ones that I do, well, here and there too. I guess I'm trying to be much more consistent with it. I'll turn this on because I have some of it like ready on FL Studio, um, to, like kind of like play. I don't know stems or just pieces of it here in a second. But uh, yeah, my electronic stuff, I go under the name uh, Geronico. So if, if, you've seen, if you've seen a couple of those uploads recently on my channel, that's me. Uh, so I finished a, an, an EP, a Geronico EP. So that, this would be the third one. And it's, uh, it's five tracks. Each track is a, is a little over, it's either almost seven minutes or over seven minutes. Babylonie is, I think it's like a, a good 11 or 12 minutes. Just a second. And so, yeah, I, I make all that stuff with FL Studio using sound. It, it, various uh, sound packs that I've found over the years, uh, but most, well, all of which you can just find for free on a lot of these places, you know, websites. Um, and, and I don't use any any like pre-made loops or anything. It's all um, you know one shot, one shots, which is basically a little piece of percussion, like a, a kick. You, you put you put that in, or uh, you put a snare in, and just keep going. And until you got a beat, uh, I'll, I'll typically kind of like sort of have a beat in my head already. And I'll start with the kick in my head and then work from there. And then with the melodies, I just kind of hum them to myself for a while until I, I just kind of uh, think of something that kind of clicks. Um, but yeah, the, the melodies and the, the sense that I use, it's uh, with a, uh, it's a VST thing uh, called a Massive from native instruments and uh, you can make styles of synths and then you can uh, find um, all kinds of different uh, presets for it which you can also edit those and make them how sound how, however you want but yeah my stuff is um, <clears throat> I kind of have like sort of like a video game esque mindset when I make those <clears throat> but it, it's really just like kind of all kinds of stuff, but it's, it's, it's an electronic territory and the hip hop territory. I'm not really trying to go for a set uh, genre or really any, or anything really. I just make stuff and uh, yeah, I'm trying to keep going with it even more than I did. Uh, there was a point I think like 2016, 17 where I was getting in that vapor wave a slump where I was making a lot more of that just because I, I guess like it was, um, I guess realistically a, a lot of that, what I was making was a little easier to make because of course, since it's, you're sampling something, you, you know, have a template, but, uh, with the Geronico stuff, it all, it's all from scratch. <clears throat> so it does, it does take longer. And there are ones that I, yeah, there's a track that I had held on to, I only had like a, a demo of it kind of going on or the skeleton of it for like over a year. And then I finally was like, all right, let's get back to it. Let's finally finish <laughs> the shit. Thank you. Mel Melody packs for Vaporwave. Oh, that's not sure, but yeah, I, I don't use melody packs though. I I program in the melodies. Like I don't have a keyboard, but you can, um, you can just like program them in on something called p a piano roll. You just pull it up, and then obviously it'll you'll have it set. You want to have it set to whatever style of synth you want to use. Is melody pack is like that even a thing? Yeah, I, I'm not sure. Okay, yeah, yeah. I guess I'll I'll play a little bit. 
of some stuff that I finished recently. So this isn't like the, um, this is basically on a FL studio right now. I'm sorry. So right now I basically have just, a, just rows of a bunch of like a bunch of different samples and then a bunch of different melodies with different <laughs> synth styles. So here is just like, you can do something called soloing each track. So there's just the kick on its own. So each song I do, um, I really try to explore as much as, of a loop as I can and add stuff and take away stuff as, as the track goes on. So yeah, um, with making melodies, I, well, for, yeah, for most of them, I'll just start with kind of a bass, like kind of a bass line that I want, that I kind of have in my head, and then I'll keep kind of going from there, and just kind of adding stuff that I think um, fits, especially in key. with it and massive. Yeah, so there's a bunch of that one. Do I want to only like mess with them up or show you? It's usually like schmancy or something. Yeah, I would say usually the first thing I start with when you put in, when I've been putting in, like, example, the very first kind of thing that I set up is the, the kicks. When I have a beat in my head, I'll say we'll, we'll start with the kick though, and just build around it. And then the bass, build around that with the melody. And, yeah, sometimes I have, and then, of course, you, you'll always have something that you, later on you don't want to use or and in which case sometimes you'll end up wanting to use it in like another song or it'll give you another idea 
So here's another one. This is the last one I finished so far. But yeah, that one's on, this one's on the EP too, called Skatesmanship. So this is a, let's see. It's too loud, I don't know. I'll bust your speaker. <laughs> So you see what I did with hats and a lot of different percussion. What I like to do is what I like to do with a lot of percussion is, um, like say with a hat, I'll have the pattern pattern in, but I'll use sometimes uh, two to three different kind or different kinds of hats at the same time, and kind of blend them, mess around with the volumes of each one until they sort of like kind of make their own thing, you know what I mean? Sorry, just a second. There's, there's like a lot. That, that's not on this one. That's the very first thing I came up with. Using more like a pr primitive sound, I guess. Okay, so this this part of the synth, or just like the one note synth, um, yeah, it's the uh, the F sharp and the E and the B played at the same time. So there's no, I'm sorry, and and all at the same time. with. That's me messing with the cutoff. 
So yeah, another thing I've been working on, <laughs> juggling, I've been juggling just a bunch of like kind of interests and things that I've been doing and then just busy <laughs> in general, I would say. I'll, I'll kind of like try to squeeze and like play a game here and there, here and there when I can too. Sorry, reading the chat. Hey, what's up? Okay, now let's. Okay, what, what else are we talking about? What else am I going to be talking about? Okay, okay. College, college. Yeah. Uh, this is my third semester so far, and it's going pretty good. Yeah, pretty good so far. A lot more hectic this semester, I would say. And then, of course, it's been tough to do a couple of these projects, just sort of like limitations and just kind of things going wrong, kind of messing it up. Like a project in um, post-production that's that's using Pro Tools with video, um, doing projects, uh, um, getting grades on it, obviously, and the tests. So, shit, what was I saying about it even? Okay, yeah, th there was a project for it that wanted me to have a file that for whatever reason you can only get on their own server. Well, guess what? Their own server was down for like a good week. For whatever reason, the teacher, I guess, just didn't decided not to like extend it, really. <laughs> I don't know what, what, what everybody else did, but th there's just little things like that that can get irritating but it has for the most part i, I still say it's gone pretty well um that yeah the uh, the classes that i are in um they're for music production yeah music production so when i graduate or when i do the four semesters i, I would i'll graduate to for uh i mean the associate's degree is what i would get and then if, if I want to do a bachelor's degree, I'd have to do fucking math. Um, like the bullshit math, I mean. You need to learn algebra, but then there is the kind where it's not even that. It's like rocket science math. I might be, I might do okay if I really want to, maybe. I, I, I'm thinking about it, but... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, yeah, there are uh, core classes that come with it too. So yeah, the one that I'm doing right now is English comp, and then uh, government as well. So yeah, so I guess I'll talk about some of the classes that I've been doing. Um, yeah, at the, at the music academy so far. So, so you have the main three that I got for uh, for this month is post-production which is pro tools basically um so this is my third kind of pro tools class the ones before that is pro tools one pro tools two <laughs> so they they teach you the they try to their best to teach you the in and outs of that software then there is right now there's music it2 where we've been learning ableton so it's just courses and projects that he wants us to do assignments and then the tests and then you get your grade <laughs> There you go. Uh, how it works is you, um, for each of these class, classes, it's just once a week. Some Sometimes, uh, I think there are some where they'll want you to come on like two, I mean like a twice a week, but uh, yeah. So then after that, after you, you class the the rest of the week, you're expected to do the, you know, do the homework or whatever comes with it. 
so yeah, able to class. Oh yeah, music and music IT one for my last semester. That was where we learned logic. So music IT, <laughs> literally from what he said, it it's just you're learning. It, it's just classes and things they're teaching you um, audio workstations that aren't Pro Tools. That's it. <laughs> so Ableton and Logic. There's no FL Studio class that I know of though. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so yeah, and then the other um, main class I'm doing right now is Music Studio Three. Music Studio Three, it, it's all. It also has to do with Pro Tools, but you, you're using it in unison with uh, the equipment. Uh, just a huge soundboard, and there's a, there's four different studios in there. Each one uses kind of a slightly different kind. Um, each one has a patch bay, which is like kind of been like the toughest thing for me to kind of like fully get a grip on. I mean, like a handle, like um, how exactly some of it works, because the patch bay can be very complicated. That's where you're connecting a lot of, you know, a cord to another side. Um, and then the more you do it, you end up with this giant like spaghetti plate damn near is what it looks like. <laughs> Uh, you know, the more that you put on it, but that, that deals with like applying uh, filters and changes and things like that. Uh, hooking thing, it kind of hooks things up to different, what's the word, basically effects is what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, and then uh, that soundboard, that particular one in this studio, it's really interesting. Um, each soundboard has a different each soundboard will have a set kind of amount of strips. So if you want one that's 20, then it'll be uh, 20 strips. So it's this. Uh, so this is say this this one strip is track one and track two. So they basically basically they basically have the same layout of buttons. It's just uh, each one and that uh, each one in each row uh, controls that track. And what's interesting about the, this particular uh, soundboard there in this class is, say, if you want to do 20 tracks, it can be, like, if you want to do all, all 20 tracks on your soundboard, that you have each one filled up with, with something, you know, no matter what it is, whether it be, you know, something from recording, you know, you got 20 different ones, well, this one can make it to where it's magnet magnetic basically you have the uh, the knobs here and if you want to say hey i want to go to track say you have 20 tracks but you want to go to track 25 it'll make it to where whatever which one you set like say uh track 25 is, is like I th is how it works like it's a track attached to if you have it set for uh Track 20, say you want to pull that up, then track 20, it, the digital letters will change it to, say, 25. And the knob will magnetically switch back to whatever you had it on. So that's what, that's how, how it goes back to where it was saved. So, yeah, there's like a little magnet in there that just pushes it back to where, um, to the track that you're wanting it to be on. So instead of just having a giant fucking soundboard with 100 tracks or whatever, you can say how they have only 10 if you want and be able to store a, bit, a bunch of different ones on the same one and pull them up as you need it. So, so, the, so this is the digital version of it basically with analog. I don't think you can that I know of. I think there's a way, I think there's a way shit. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's only my third seven though. So yeah, yeah, we, we work with the soundboard in that class. We work with the other side of the classroom, of course, which is uh, where the instruments are. Do you have the booth or record where you record everything, and then the area where everything uh, gets you know recorded. Uh, so you, you, a lot of the si setting up mics, um, just connecting everything between the two rooms. So in between the room, it's a wall, but it's made of glass, so you can see the other. The, like if you've seen, you know, um, 
any behind the scenes of making an album or something. It's, it's like that. Yeah. Yeah. So far, so far, good. It can be, some of it can be kind of fast paced, especially when you kind of are, depending on how many classes you're juggling, it can be tough, but I'm getting through it. And then uh, last two semesters, it was, it was all A's and B's. The only C, the only like low C that I got, I think was on uh, music business class. Yeah. There's a lot of money and oh, and there's money involved. In it. <laughs> so there's math and stuff that I didn't like fully remember by the time the, t the test test came around. Um, but my my fault for, for not like studying hard and nearly as hard enough as I could have. But yeah, other than that, so far, so far, so good. What else? What else do I want to fucking talk about? Talk about work. Oh. Oh, people are saying things. Okay, uh, someone said, uh, how, how did you get started making music? I'm 26 and have dabbled, but I want to get more serious about it. Yeah, uh, how I started it was basically just with FL Studio. That's what I've been using since... I think like 20, 2012, yeah, 2013 or 14 when I started really kind of messing around with it. And, you know, um, I just kind of it was looking around on, on the different kinds of audio workstations and FL Studio was typically the one that was being talked about the most. And, and especially in terms of, what is it called? I don't know, like ease of, it just it's sort of easier to uh, figure out than some of the others. So I started out with that and then watched just just uh, just keep watching. I kept watching uh, tutorials on FL Studio and just how it works. There, there's a shitload of people. Um, I say they'll just make a song and then you they'll walk through you step by step. They'll show you how they're doing in the process. Okay. Shit. Let's talk about yeah work. Yeah, I've been. Uh, I got this job at a place called uh, Slotchkeys. Uh, yeah, about a couple months ago, and finally, uh, actually no, 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 no. They have a good two or three now. Um, yeah, I with these uh, few fewer classes that I have. This time, this semester, I felt yeah, it, it, I, I felt like it can uh, de can definitely handle jug juggling work in class. And so far, I say for the most part, it has worked. Um, because it, during the winter that semester, it, I had a what? Yes, yeah, seven classes for the first semester, and then six for the second one, which I think it, the second was it, it was becoming it's just getting too many juggling a lot of shit <laughs> for a second. Yeah. But this semester it's all, it, it, it's five classes. So yeah, the ones that I mentioned earlier. So I was able to keep it at uh, five classes with it, while uh, staying in my uh, 12 hour or 12 credit hour limit because I am on financial aid. So I have no, choice but to be enrolled in total credit hours a semester i can't you, like you can't just like get one if you're on financial aid you can they might pay for some of it but not all of it and all these colleges it's it's all it's bullshit amounts um so if you want for, to be fully covered by uh like say both the grant and just fully be able to to be taken care of, you know, by the loan and stuff like that. Um, yeah, you, you definitely. I'm sorry, just a second. Right. 
right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. You can't. Uh, yeah, with financial aid, unfortunately, there are limits sometimes. But what I did is that I was able just to squeeze like five classes with uh, twelve credit hours, just by the the fact that the the online music composition or not music uh, English comp class. It's three hours, and then the the online government one is three hours. That's what it's set at. And when I say three hours, that's that's how long it's supposed to take and all to like for, for studying done or how they estimate it. But it's really like kind of a number <laughs> that's there. Um, for those you just you just turn in the homework <laughs> really. Uh, for music uh, for music comp it's just been like an essay a week really like they want you to read like a big thing and then do something and then uh, do an essay on it yeah yeah one of them was about yeah one of the essays was about um yeah yeah uh, discourse and like language how growing up with you know, talking a certain way or being around the certain uh, kinds of peoples or people early in life affects who you just kind of how you think about other people who are aren't in your same you know boat whether it be different kinds of cultures or just, just different per personalities in general. So uh, as a re so I uh, gave a lot of uh, comparisons to just stuff that I was interested in. Or have been or have been interested in like a recently um, character Eddie Mus Munson from the newest uh, season of Stranger Things. Um, I felt I, I just kind of wrote about him a little bit. He's definitely one of those characters that you know in, in literature. Well, in his case, a, a TV show <laughs> that the kind it kind of goes against you know social groups. Because discourse, it, it's it's essentially like kind of a clique. People, people dividing into their own like sections of kinds of peoples, of peoples. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Eddie Munson. There was a scene where he was pissed off that um, him him and his friends, you know, playing Dungeons and Dragons and being into metal, weed, and all that shit. Um, it just didn't like being labeled as like the freak or like a Satanist because the, the show Stranger Things, it was, you know, it takes place. The show takes place in the eighties back when uh, this, this satanic panic and all that shit was huge. Um, <laughs> yeah. When Dungeons and Dragons, Dungeons and Dragons and all that stuff was being, um, yeah, just being called uh, satanic, mainly just old white people, not getting it, <laughs> not understanding what's going on trying to protect their kids too much. Uh, so Eddie, um, yeah, he gets it on the table and just kind of um, it says, apparently it's wrong for me to do that. But as long as you're into, you know, music class or science or parties or a ball where you toss. Uh, yeah, a game where you toss a ball into a laundry basket. Apparently I must be the bad guy, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, I was, he, he's the kind of guy that was labeled as the, uh, the freak, even though he is basically just, you know, being himself and not trying to conform. And then of course, um, that was what uh, some of the other uh, themes of that season were too, because at the same time there was Lucas, um, you know, whenever Eddie was accused of um, like a crime that he just, I don't want to spoil anything, but accused of a crime that he just didn't do, Lucas was kind of caught in the middle because he was in basketball class or in basketball. Yeah, he was on the basketball team. So he was, of course, like he's kind of normally the, the nerdy one, also plays Dungeons and Dragons, but kind of caught in the middle between um, 
these jocks just kind of at Eddie's throat and trying to find him because he he thinks that he did something that he just didn't. Um, See, so yeah, I yeah, yeah, it really ties into a lot about a lot of just really all it boils down to, to is like being yourself and kind of trying to be part of a community of people being themselves. You don't have to be, have to be in a group of uh, people who are exactly the same. You know what I mean? Obviously. And then uh, the other stuff, uh, some of the other stuff that I talked about and for that essay, or I mentioned that some twilight zone episodes, like a uh, number was a number 22 or something. And number, uh, yeah, 13. Number 13 looks just like you. And then another ep episode called, um, yeah, The Obsolete Man. Yeah, number 13. It's kind of uh, set in a, a kind of a dystopian world where uh, everyone wants to stay pretty. So when they're like 18 or however old, they get surgery to make them selves look like look pretty or their their idea of, <laughs> of pretty and of course there's the one lone characters like i don't I like the i like the way i look just fine i, I already think i look pretty i don't need all this surgery and <clears throat> and uh, and of course oh i forget i forget the catch like whenever you're you, when you get that surgery to be pretty it can only be like tw you can only choose like a model of like 20 different people so you can say i, I want to look like num that guy number 13 on that picture i want to look like number nine um so in that episode she read books a lot and was it was, it was said that I, I think they either said books were banned in this kind of dystopian future or um, no one, it, books were like a long forgotten thing. And um, it's talked about um, even Malcolm X and a lot of people that <clears throat> are talked about in this English class definitely talk about how books and just kind of filling yourself with knowledge in general is a great way of... Um, like even like Eddie and Stranger Things, for example, was obviously big into Lord of the Rings and all those fantasy books. Um, yeah, it really helps you to get an idea of other cultures, other types of people, because you're reading about them. You're not only learning the same thing from the people that, only the people that you're around. You know what I mean? And then of course that Twilight Zone episode of the obsolete man, where a guy is literally um, being about to be put to death because he uh because he's a librarian you know books and kind of of a world where um like these dictators you know they say um they have the rule that you're to be put to death for all this stupid shit including um like reading books or just things that don't have a purpose in in their eyes so yeah, that's just the kind of thing, kind of the things that I kind of explored in that uh, essay about discourse. Okay, so that was school talk. <laughs> oh, I didn't even like really finish my work talk, did I? Yeah, I'm sorry. That was probably like, well, like 10 minutes ago at this point. So yeah, I got a job at a place called Schlotzky's. Schlotzky's. Yeah, it is a, a sandwich restaurant. Um, so yeah, here in Oklahoma, they've always been here for the longest time, even since I was a kid. Um, yeah, their sandwiches are great, especially the originals. They're on sourdough bread. The original also has uh, ham, a ricotta, and salami, lettuce. Of course, we got we put a cheese, we melt it, and kind of melt it into the bread. Um, yeah, I, I've always loved the sandwiches there. Um, so it was it was really cool just being almost like immediately hired by them. Yeah, um, and they and they also make pizza. They also, they also make uh, we also make soup, a bunch of stuff. 
So it's a deli, basically. Um, I don't think it's everywhere, or at least not yet, um, which is weird because it's been around since the 70s. But uh, yeah, it started in uh, Austin, Texas. Yeah. So, uh, um, basically, Sloshkies is kind of an everything. Everything's sort of a job. Because, uh, like I say, if you're in the drive through position, you're also, um, like, during your downtime when there's not any customers, say, you're, you're just doing uh, cleaning or food prep or dishes or just anything to, to basically get out by, by 10 o'clock at night. Or, or in my case, if I, you know, since I'm on the night shift. We usually try to get out by 10. Um, so I do the dishes a lot. Um, they've had me on uh, drive through a bunch. It can get pretty hectic, especially because of the headset for the drive through speaker. Uh, it doesn't <laughs> always work the greatest. Sometimes I can't even hear what the fuck they're saying, even if... Um, I mean, if they, like sometimes you'll get like a woman that just speaks so softly. So I'll have to like sometimes like ask more than once. Wait, what was that last <laughs> that last combo you asked for or whatever? But it's going good. Busy days, but uh, usually when they're busy days, they're only like busy half hours. You know what I mean? It's strange. It usually when somebody comes in, more than one person comes in at the same time. It's <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, it, teamwork, of course. It's not always, it, it's never just me doing one thing. We, we always help each other out. And then, now, of course, the, the other position of the, sam the sandwich making positions. Been doing that one more a little bit, too. You got your three sections. The part where you you make your sandwich with the meat on it. The second section is the oven that it goes through. And then the third section is where you put all the, the main toppings and stuff um, to the sandwich after it was toasted. Hey, what the fuck happened to Quiznos? Oh, I'm sorry. Anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then if, uh, if you've heard of Cinnabon, uh, Sloshkies, uh, they are, as far as I know, all... And the one that I work at is also a Cinnabon. So if you come to Sloshkies and you want a Cinnabon classic roll or a center of a roll, center of a roll is like we just take out the that very middle like gooey part of the cinnamon roll. Uh, if you want that, we got all that shit too. Because yeah, Sloshkies and Cinnabon are they're from the same uh, company, Focus Brands. And if you've been to, like, if you don't have the slush keys where you're at, but you've been to an airport, I imagine there's probably a slush keys there. It seems like there's one at every, like, airport I've ever been to. And it's in the bond at every airport. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, so, Only. You're awesome. I've seen, I've seen you on the channel a lot, mate, with your comments and, uh, Always love seeing them. So, yeah, work. It's been an hour and a half. Should I, like, drink water for a second and take a break? Like, I want to drink some juice. But when I come back, I'm going to talk about music, like a lot of the different kind of music that I've been listening to over the past few months. Thanks, Connor.
All right, I'm back. Slash keys when this in the mood. Pain and gain. Yeah, yeah. Pain and Gain is a, is a really interesting movie. Tony Shalhoub, speaking of which, is, is one of my favorite just actors out there. He's great. I like everything he's in. Yeah, Tony Shalhoub, he's great in Monk. He's a star of, yeah, he's, he's a star of Monk, and then he's in um, one of my, one of the first, probably the, I think one of the first kind of sort of adult action movies I saw when I was, at least when I was a kid, it was at Men in Black. Uh, he was the pawn shop owner who's like, he's an alien. So his, his head, he's a kind of, his head blows up whenever he's like nervous. <laughs> it's great. So <laughs> yeah, Slash Gibbs was in that movie. He was in galaxy quest. Thank you so much. I don't know why I forgot the Galaxy Quest, but yeah, Tony Shalhoub's in there too. Great movie. Yeah, Galaxy Quest is yeah, it's just it's just fucking funny. Yeah, it's about it's about actors on a Star Trek type show who actually I kind of get recru recruited in doing into doing like a real space mission. <laughs> But they, and they have like no clue what they're doing. But yeah, it's just a good kind of comedy alien movie. I watched a, an interesting movie on Hulu last night called Prey. It was pretty kick ass. It has nothing to do with slash keys, obviously. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah, Prey is really cool. It's a, pre a prequel to Predator. Mm -hmm. When I say prequel, I mean they way, go like way back, like the ancient times. It's just a fun movie. All right. Okay. So I'm going to talk about music. Stuff that, stuff that I don't, um, yeah, a lot of this stuff I would say is stuff that I listen to that I don't always necessarily get to put on the channel as much. Or maybe, um, you know, because it's already been featured or copyright or whatever reasons. Because, um, yeah, there, there's obviously, uh, <laughs> I'm not the only one uploading everything. So if I see that something has already been uploaded, then I won't worry about it, you know, by, by another channel or whatever. So... So uh, who I want to start with? Let's start with uh, Dabri. Dabri is um, he, he's a hip hop producer, and then he also also under the name James T. Cotton. Under that name, he produces a uh, a lot of uh, just really like punchy like dance floor type music. Um, just really really killer stuff. Like got uh, Buck from James T. Cotton is. It's a banger. Just really fucking good. Good for turning all the way. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, Dabri, uh, it's Tad, uh, his name's Tad Molinix, and his, his album, under his own name, Tad Molinix, he produces under, like, all three. So, yeah, that very first album was the very first, it was uh, Ghostly International's very first release, and he's been on there ever since with all those albums, all this stuff. The James T. Cotton stuff is on uh, Ghostly International's uh, kind of dance sector called a spectral sound. Body Code is another really good, good really cool guy on a uh, spectral sound as well. Uh, on the techno side, he's on the techno side and he, uh, he likes to, Body Code likes to use a lot of uh, kind of African um, rhythms and just takes it to a very uh, futuristic place. But uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Back to Dabri. <laughs> um, it's spelled. Uh, I'm sorry. People don't know what I'm talking about. It's spelled a D A B R Y E. <clears throat> if you've heard of Flying Lotus, you might have heard of Dabri. They uh, they're both like they feature each other in mixes all the time. Um, 
And then, of course, Flying Lotus remixed a, a Daubry song, too, called Game Over. And then uh, in the adult swim world, um, yeah, both Flying Lotus, Daubry, and all these other producers like Jay, um, Jay Dilla, Psyche or Dobby, everybody have been featured on like adult swim bumps and stuff like that. Um, so another one being a, a lot of them showing up on a compilation called uh, Ghostly Swim. There are three of them now, I think. But uh, yeah, the first one had Dobry in it and a song from Fly Am Sam, which is Sam I Am and Flying Lotus. A really good kind of funky track from Osborne in there. Um, I'm trying to think. School of Seven Bells is in there. There's a shitload of people in that compilation, but uh, uh, I think that's how that's the main way I found Dobry and then Ghostly International in general. If you've ever heard of Tycho or Calm Trues or I mean if you if you listen to Synthwave, you've definitely heard of Calm Trues. But if you've heard of Shigeto, Matthew Deere, all these people have um they're on Ghostly International. Uh, tobacco is is on there too. A lot of the stuff is. Um so yeah, just a record label with a, just a lot of diversity. If you like warp records, um, yeah, Dabri is on. I feel like I'm, yeah, Dabri's on Ghostly, and I know I'm gonna screw like something up because I want to talk about some of the people that he's featured. Um, yeah, he's got uh, under Debray his hip hop stuff. He, he's got he goes. It's got three albums. One's called uh, One Three, and then Two Three, and the newest one, of course, is Three <laughs> Three Three. It's just strange to me compared to a lot of these hip hop producers that have been in the game so long. Why he doesn't seem to get as much exposure on YouTube and a lot of these places as you would. As you would think, especially featuring some <laughs> of the people that he's featured. Um, yeah, because a lot of his stuff is instrumental, but a lot of it, um, especially 3-3, three, three, has a, a bunch of different rappers that he has come in. So, yeah, 3-3 three, three has a... Uh, let's listen to some people. The first track has Guilty Simpson in it. The second track, called Emancipated, uh, is it features uh, Ghostface Killer. Yes, just literally Ghostface Killers and in, in that track. It's strange to me why it doesn't have like fucking like millions of views, like you would think. <laughs> so uh, then uh, DeBray's got a Dabri on this record. Uh, There's a song called Lil Motherfuckers uh, featuring Doom. And so that's MF Doom. MF Doom is one of my favorite uh, producers. Uh, pro well, he produces too, but he's one of my favorite rappers out there. <clears throat> he's, uh, he's really great in the, uh, the underground world. And then I mentioned Adult Swim earlier. Uh, Doom and uh, Danger Doom from Niles Barkley and a bunch of other groups have uh, collaborated. They're called uh, Danger Doom. And that whole album was all about just Adult Swim shit and sampling stuff from, from Adult Swim. That's just a really fun one. And I've always loved uh, Mad Villain, which is uh, Mad Lib and Doom. Um, so of course, seeing Dobry and Doom do a track is, uh, especially such a, a fucking great track. <laughs> it was just really fun to see. Yeah, three three came out and uh, it came out in two thousand eighteen. That's right. Yeah, Dobry, he's kind of a select. He's very selective about when he he likes to come out with stuff. Of course, he's doing shows all the time too. Okay, so Doom, uh, fucking Ghostface Killer. Who else? La Peace, uh, Fat Father. Um, the Appetite fuses a bunch of people. It's got a Rock Marcino, Quell Chris, and Danny Brown. Danny Brown, interestingly enough, is now on Warp Records. <laughs> Funny how that happens. And he's, he still fits in somehow. Yeah, Warp has always been great at just getting 
It was kind of including everybody, really. So then uh, who else? Uh, John Wayne, uh, Shigido, and Shigido uh, plays drums a lot, so that, that one's a, an instrumental track. Nolan the Ninja, GND, the Silas Green, Denmark, Vessi. And let's just check out, uh, I know his second album had some names on it too. Hmm. I think Blue was in one, if I'm not mistaken. Blue from uh, Blue in Exile, but uh, yeah. It's, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, but I. Uh, it is just odd. The, the drop off a viewpoint, or a view count, or whatever you want to call it, between a lot of these. Uh, artists who are in the same same genre same family uh you know um so yeah dabri like he's up there at, <laughs> and it's, it's just strange that he doesn't get as much recognition as you think uh and then of course um it, it took like what what was his instrumental version of that third album i think it was up on Bandcamp and everything else um, for like a good three or four months until I noticed, oh, nobody's put it on YouTube any, yet at all. So I guess I'll be the one <laughs> to do it. So yeah, that, um, that's another thing on my channel is that whole uh, instrumental version album. Yeah. Who, who, who the fuck else Okay, I'll talk about uh, Primus for a second. <laughs> uh, Primus was a uh, yeah, they're they're one of my favorite bands that uh, I've been into. Uh, probably say what like fifteen or sixteen. Uh, I've always been like a, kind of like a radio station surfer. Well, not uh, obviously not really at all <laughs> anymore because I'm more of like I, I listen to everything on the internet now, so I'm more of like internet music surfer. That's how I find stuff more. But uh, back then, when I was a kid, I was, I was always listening to uh, like radio stations, mainly the one that played all the classic rock stuff. So uh, Pink Floyd has always been uh, huge to me. Led Zeppelin, Rush, all those guys, and then uh, some '90s grunge stuff too. Of course, like Soundgarden and Alice in Chains. I've always been into that, into their stuff. But. What, what was I about to say? What was my point just now? <laughs> Thank you. That's right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm talking about Primus. Yeah, yeah. Mar mar uh, marijuana is, is, is good. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, I was uh, I was listening to uh, classic rock radio stations and hip hop radio stations, the eighties throwbacks, just just kind of everything, really. Um, but on the rock stations, Primus, it was typically always, as far as I know, it was always like one song from Primus. It was weird to me. Like there, there are certain bands that, for whatever reason, you only ever hear like one song from them on the radio. Um, like with Iron Maiden, it's always uh, Run to the Hills and never anything else. Um, yeah, fucking Primus sucks. I love Primus. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but Primus, they they have to be home to uh, probably some of what I consider some of the coolest music videos out there. Um, when it comes to music videos, my favorites have always been like... Um, like either animated ones or ones that are just just noticeably out of the ordinary. Like, of course, OK Go has always been a great other example of uh, people that just really go all out with their music videos. Yeah, I know it's an insert. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, they have uh, they have some uh, music videos that are made with claymation 
Um, and ones that uh, kind of cut in and out of like cartoony cut type visuals. Um, they're always dressed up in something crazy, but it, yeah, they're great. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're they are, I guess you what you call it, like funk metal. <laughs> so yeah, they're hard rock and they're kind of punky. They're, they're, they're everything. Um, and, and of course, uh, also sort of in the uh, Adult Swim Zeitgeist. Because, because yeah, um, the Primus did the theme song for the, the Robot Chicken. And then, of course, they also did the theme song for South Park. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, all their, all their stuff is great. So in the rock world, they're, 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 they've always been a, a big one for me. I've always liked bands that just don't really sound like anyone else, and Primus is just one of the main examples like that for me, for sure. Um, listen to the songs I want to talk about. Um, yeah, My Name is Mud is a great song. Um, I'm trying to remember names. Uh, yeah, the one that, that they were playing, the, that was always playing on the radio, is one known as Big Brown Beaver. <laughs> Uh, yeah, they're they're great. They they all they have like a nice kind of like southern twang to it, to it. But it just, they really make it their own. And Les Claypool from the band, he's like their front man. He's the bassist, and he slap. He uses the slap bass a lot. And then and then there are songs like My Name Is Mud, where it almost sounds like percussion in a way. But it doesn't. He's just playing his bass in a super precise way to it, to where it's, it's, it kind of sounds like percussion for a second. And um, as far as I know, he uses the the double bass on on all of the songs. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I'm forgetting. And when I talk about these people, I just randomly forget of all the, the, the fucking names of the songs that they made. <laughs> but there's one that comes to mind um, that I, it's, it's sort of been on my mind for some reason. Um, I really like a, uh, a music video from Childish Gambino called uh, uh, This Is America. And I've always... Like for a long time, I've seen the the music video for Mr. Crinkle by Primus. And after seeing This Is America, the more I watch it, the more both of those videos, they're clear. There's just noticeable like similarities between both of those videos. Just the kind of the way, you know, the way that they're just designed. Um, okay, so I'll start off. Uh, Mr. Crinkle and This Is America. <laughs> Both videos have the main character um, like in a giant building. And this is America from Childish Gambino. It's all um, it's all like one shot as far as I remember. It's all taken with one camera. Um, there's no cuts or anything. And then in Mr. Crinkle from Primus, the video for about the first three or so minutes it's all just in the one same frame the camera never leaves it's just him playing violin <laughs> in this creepy like uh, suit and um and so yeah the, both this is america and mr crinkle just it, crinkle it's in a giant warehouse if i'm not, if i'm mistaken if i'm not mistaken both videos feature a guy walking around on fire at some point <laughs> And Mr. Crinkle, he was just like walking like nonchalantly, like nothing's like going on. <laughs> and he's on fire. And so, yeah. And then at the end of Mr. Cr Mr. Crinkle, um, the camera starts riding on a rail in a way, but I think it like goes backwards, kind of like as if you're on a roller coaster. So, also kind of, yeah, one camera kind of a thing. Yeah. Actually, did This Is America have a guy on fire? Well, it might have not had a guy on fire, but it had a lot of crazy shit going on in a giant warehouse. <laughs> Something had to have been on fire. I'll, I'll, I'll have to watch it again. But yeah, my uh, yeah, my main favorite Primus records are uh, 
my favorite favorite one is a tales from the punch bowl it's a this is great all the way through sailing the seas of cheese is awesome their latest one um the desaturated seven is really cool too they get super like kind of progressive rock in that one so sort of like think kind of like tool but more of like a southern sounding version of it a great concept album too um yeah it's about a a kid's book kid's picture book about seven goblins and they're each of a of a different color going on this like huge adventure yeah primus go check it out <laughs> shit shit john the fisherman that's a great song from them jerry was a race car driver is one of my favorites from from them uh tommy the cat of course they got a song called anti-pop southbound pachyderm is great uh that's one of the main ones that i kind of had in mind when i was talking about their claymation music videos but yeah that's one of them So, all right. So now I want to talk about, okay. I'm going to talk about somebody who uh, I've been listening for, like, let's go on, on and off to for a good, like, two or three months. Um, especially since her uh, her new album came out. Usually when something new comes out, I'll just binge all their stuff. Um, just super replayable pop musician. Um, I've talked about Toro Imo, who I discovered very shortly after I graduated high school. So this was in 2013. He Toro Imo, uh, I've talked about him plenty um, on these streams. I think I'm pretty sure before, but he was pro he's probably who I would consider my favorite male like pop musician, especially in like kind of the artistic pop or ex experimental side of pop. Now, my favorite female pop musician, who I also discovered it around the same time, um, pretty much after I graduated, was uh, her name is Santi Gold. Uh, so I thought I'd talk about her. Uh, I'll probably talk a little bit, a little bit about her latest record, but probably all of them really. Um, oh shit! Oh shit! Thank you! Thank you! I love all your videos, like all, all your Doppler radars. They're great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so anyway, yeah, I'm gonna talk about uh, Santi Gold. She she's probably who I would consider my my favorite, uh, just female pop musician, or and one of my favorite pop musicians out there. Uh, yeah, yeah, in terms of just super like kind of variation from song to song type artist. She, she has always just been a, a very big one for me. And her, her first album came out in a, a 2008, I think when I discovered her, it was around the time someone after her second album came out, that's called master of my make believe a uh, great one all the way through. And it has her most uh, famous, song uh that one's got like i think like 54 million views on youtube uh it's called disparate youth the keepers is uh is pretty big too i think like maybe like four or five million but yeah she's on warner brothers records and either warner brothers or one of their their sub labels yeah still is and yeah, just another one of those that is weird, like for being so big as she or being on such a big label is just odd that she doesn't seem to be as pushed by the label as some as some of their other people. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, her I think her her biggest uh, viewed th song, Disparate Youth, is like fifty. I think fifty five million, but not like a hundred million like uh, a lot of the, the no, much more famous pop artists. But uh, that what I'm, I definitely say she's she's still getting there. <laughs> or I mean she she's there, but uh, 
um, she just keeps getting bigger. Like every year, even years where she's not making albums because she, especially when she, she only comes out with an album, it would be maybe every like four to six years. <laughs> But but it's always just super always super replayable, just album to album for me. See, so yeah, I'll, I'll talk about some of it, and then uh, yeah, Sonny Gold. Uh, she was born in Pennsylvania, and uh, she's forty five or forty six now. She's she ages backwards, <laughs> and uh, so she's got five albums at this point. So her newest album is called Spirituals. So it, it just came out this summer. It's, uh, ten tracks. I think most of her albums, it, it was always maybe like maybe like 11 to 13 tracks. Uh, so, this, so this last album, Spirituals, is a little bit more introverted, a little bit more melancholy, or a lot more melancholy than the others as a whole, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, nice. Just a second. So, yeah, sorry. Um, I found Santi Gold, yeah, shortly, shortly after I graduated. I found her through the last FM page of Little Dragon, the, the similar artist section. Everybody's last FM page has a, has a similar artist. Um, the same thing uh, goes for on Spotify and all those websites. And so Little Dragon I found through Gorillaz, of course, their album Plastic Beach. So uh, Santi Gold is probably the number one person, like the number one answer I would give for that question that people that you'll hear online a, a lot of people asking it, um, about artists who sound or or sound a lot like gorillas, especially just in terms of constant variation from song to song. Uh, so yeah, the Sonny Gold would be who I would say is probably as closest you can get. Um, to kind of what the gorillas does, especially if you make comparisons between both Sonny Gold and Gorillaz's first albums, they're both self-titled, and they uh, they both are hugely influenced by reggae, I like reggae and dub reggae, and um, I'm sorry, yeah, punk, like Bad Brains kind of era punk, the, the early stuff. Uh, so she's all over the map there, and then she's done plenty of retro sounding ones too. They kind of have an 80s flair to them. <clears throat> um, a really good example is a Rendezvous Girl from her album 99 Cents, that's her third album. Yeah, yeah, it's super, um, super punchy, kind of very energetic. A song, great bass line, which is very pretty. And uh, yeah, I love her voice. Uh, she, yeah, she, she always has uh, just great range as switches between different uh, singing styles, usually in each song. So yeah, and then, uh, okay, Demon Days from Gorillaz. Oh, by the way, that album is how I found out about Doom. Because he was on a track from Demon Days, so yeah, Demon Days, and then uh, Santi Gold's second album. I'd say they they sort of have comparisons, the fact that they continue what they started, but get a little bit more um, themed with the lyrics, go a little bit more social political than even before. Um, oh, awesome! My sister has several. Or did several of HR from Bad Brains' tattoos. That is kick-ass. Wow. Yeah, I love Bad Brains. Um, Sonny Gold loves Bad Brains. She's she's always been into all that and all that stuff. Um, and yeah, Sonny Gold is uh, she's the kind of pop artist who has pretty much control of everything she does. She writes all of her own songs. 
Um, and then there are ones with co-writers, but she still like lead write, writes them all. Uh, she directs all of her music videos. She stars in them. And the, uh, yeah, she, she always wants to know, you know, or she wants it to sound like what she wants it to sound like in her head. She is also a producer. She produces a lot of her own stuff too. Uh, again, whether it be producing it or co-producing her songs. Yeah, she's just a complete powerhouse uh, of a musician. Um, yeah, her real name is uh, her real name Santi White. Did I say that already? <laughs> I'm sorry. Name Jeff. <laughs> nice. Yeah, another another good retro sounding song from uh, Sonny Gold um, is one. Well, there's a few on Master of My ba Make Believe. There's the keepers. The keepers, of course. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, that's one of my main favorites from her. Yeah, Des Disparate Youth and The Keepers were the first songs that I ever heard from her. You know, I just put her name on YouTube. So... Yeah, she does. So, shit, what was it? <laughs> okay, another great retro song. Uh, retro styled on her album... It's also on Master of My Make Believe, but it's it's a bonus track. Yeah, there's that, and there's like a remix of Go or something like that. That's on like the it, it's on the iTunes or Am and Amazon version. I think it's called uh, Never Enough. Uh, just super pretty, um, very beach kind of beach influenced track. <clears throat> Definitely li listen to it during a sunset for sure. Uh, it's just great. I, uh, I can't get enough of her voice in that one. And she uh, has a, a, her lyrics on that one. They're kind of, they're kind of me melancholy, kind of, kind of basically about uh, um, just having th everything that you want, but not ever being really happy, feeling like it's never enough. <laughs> But instrumentally, it is just pretty chill. It's really happy. Uh, what other kinds? Uh, what other ones? High, High Priestess from her newest album is kind of retro. Um, another super energetic one. I love that one. Yeah, it's called High Priestess. I love this kind of, uh, it's probably electronically made, but it's, it sounds like this kind of, uh, swarm of uh, not trumpets, but those really huge, uh, versions that, you know, see like Lord of the Rings, uh, or one of those bigger, like, uh, ancient war type movies where they just have that giant horn, um, I swear that's kind of what I'm hearing in the background that mixes in kind of with the bass as well. It's just a super intense track for sure. And one of the one where one of the ones where she raps in it too. It's kind of stingy with her rapping. She'll do it here and there sometimes. Zevra, hey, what's up? Yeah. Yeah, I love Zephyr's stuff. Another one that makes all kind of, um, makes all kinds of electronic music. Definitely take check out Zephyr. Okay, so Sony Gold. Oh, I'm sorry. Here's here's a picture of her. For those who haven't seen her. Um, what else to talk about? Let's, let's just start with like her first album and work, work our way up kind of, um, Baroka, I guess the stuff that she's been featured in before, um, she was, uh, in a song called hell by Aesop Rocky. That's what it's called. And then she was in a, a song from Jay-Z trying to remember which one that was too. <laughs> 
uh, and then she was a song with the uh, Beastie Boys. Uh, she uh, she's been featured alongside MIA, which is another uh, person, a big person in the uh, kind of the um, experimental kind of alternative pop world. And uh, Sonny Golden and Maya, have, uh, they've toured together um, as well. Yeah, they're, they're buddies. I'm on Tobin. I'm on Tobin and kicks ass. Oh, I'm sorry, just a second. I have notes. <laughs> Okay, so oh yeah, she's been she's gotten a shout out from Beyonce before. The song is called uh, "Break My Soul" by Beyonce, or it's the uh, the Queen's remix. There's a point where Beyonce at the uh, towards the end of the song does a huge, a huge like kind of shout out to about thirty different. Um, I guess what she would consider the the most uh, influential like female black um, pop artists, and Sonny Gold was like literally the second person she met she, she brought up like right after uh, Rosetta Tharp, and then uh, Nina Simone was in there and uh, Grace Jones, a lot of really cool people she mentioned. But yeah, it just it, and yeah the the the. the the list of shoutouts was not in alphabetical order. It was just cool just hearing Sonic Gold be the, the first. Or, I mean, sorry, the second in that list. But what? So what else? All right, let's talk about her. Uh, her first album, self-titled. One of my main favorite. Some of my main favorite tracks on there are the kind of um, both punky and reggae themed ones. Um, just really, <laughs> just kind of happy and, and just super energetic. Um, a lot of them take me to a very like beach kind of place for sure. Um, she's got a great track called Say Aha. I love that one. Um, her voice goes up and down all over the place in that one. And yeah, just super, just a super head bobby kind of track. Then uh, you'll find a way is a great song from her on that album. Uh, yeah, yeah, just both lyrically and and just how she sings uh, the, in the instrumental aspect, it, it always just meshes perfectly. There's a lot of there's always a lot of thought put into just everything she makes. Unstoppable is an awesome song on that album too. Yeah, that one. That one's a great kind of a stereo. What's the word like? A song. It, it kind of moves through your head the way, um, the way that it moves from like the right to left speaker. Certain as uh, certain elements uh, of the song. Like it just really like kind of surrounds your head. Like it's inside your head. <laughs> uh, spatula word. Special the right word for it. It's one of the words for it. Yeah, that one's killer. Um, they're very bassy too. Um, My Superman is a really good track on there. So let's talk about. So let's talk about the second album, Master of My Make Believe. That I would probably say is my favorite out of all of them. Especially like a, like as a whole, um, I think the, the first album have some, has some of my favorite stuff in it. But um, as a as a whole, yeah, Master on My Make Believe is uh, no, I know it, it, it's just it's just great <laughs> uh, start to finish. It's a, it's a little bit heavier with the uh, kind of the sound design, the way everything sounds um, a lot. It's a lot more. Um, even more thought out than the first album. And uh, yeah, um, and uh, all of her stuff has kind of 
similar to gorillas has a social uh political a lot of social political commentary like uh, the keepers you know on, on that second album another another very kind of happy sounding track very energetic has a kind of a drum percussion that goes and just keeps going on um her voice uh plays off of it perfectly but the lyrics it's it's just um another more kind of i don't say necessarily melly melancholy but kind of deep look into um, just how just just us as people and it, the part of the lyrics is uh, we're the keepers and while we we sleep in America our house is burning down. It's kind of the whole song is kind of about us as a people just seemingly not willing to admit when there's some really bad <laughs> fucked up shit that go, you know, going on the world that we should really worry about fixing instead of just pretending that it doesn't exist because we're the keepers. We have a lot of the power to change it, but not all of us do. So that's kind of what the song's about. And, uh, the music video illustrate, it illustrates it well. Um, it's, it's kind of like uh, the whole music video, of course, like the whole time it will sometimes cut to the attic where their, their house is burning. It's about to burn down the whole time because it's cut, like the attic caught fire. And then there's this, this super, like almost like Tim Burton-y looking like white family all eating like this radioactive food. And then they get just fucking drive by by somebody outside. They, they, they just shoot at them through the window and then... Everybody at the dinner table ducks and gets down, but then after that, they just get back up and then continue eating. Uh, so yeah, it definitely fits. <laughs> Especially like it, it's it, the music video is also funny in a way because the fact like the, the the fact that Santi Gold is like dancing through a huge ch chunk of it. So, so yeah, it's like funny, but in, in a darkish kind of a way. Some other great songs on there. Let me try to think right off the bat. The first track is a yeah. The first track called "Go" is a is a great way. It's a great way to for, for her to start start off the album for sure. Another super energetic one. Uh, she has some quieter, a good three or four quieter um, kind of chill ones on there too. Like the riots gone. Um, yeah, just, that one's just super pretty. Um, uh, Pirate in the Water is a great one. Uh, that one, yeah, it's another sort of uh, reggae-themed one in a way. Uh, sort of a little bit down tempo compared to the other ones, but still heavy anyway. It still has a like a really like kind of kick to it for sure. Um. Let's see. Look at these. Look at these hoses. Really good. <laughs> really intense. Um, yeah, just both instrumentally and just uh, yeah, the way that she sings in that one. That that one's mostly like in like in a kind of a rapping kind of a way. So yeah, that's always been uh, a big album for me. And then uh, her third album. Again, I think came in like five years later. So that was like 2016 or so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that one's called 99 Cents. Awesome song on there called Chasing Shadows. Um, one of her biggest ones, I think, at this point. Um, yeah, that whole album, it's always... She's one of those artists where when a new album comes out and when you listen to it, like... Not even like the first time around, you feel like you've been listening to her for like quite a long time. It just instantly has that staying power, almost to the point where, where you would think that it would it was always there. But uh, yeah, she she's always been good with it. So ninety nine cents was just 
And it immediately clicked with me for sure. Uh, she's got so many great ones on there. Uh, can't get enough of myself is one that you would think would have like a billion views or something at this point because it's very it, it very has like kind of a hit single kind of um, like accessibility to it, um, and it, it's kind of what it's about. It's kind of a song about narcissism in a way, like it's just how much she loves herself. Um, and and, it, and the lyrics are done and it's just like a really funny or a silly, like kind of a playful kind of a way. Um, and of course the, uh, the music video, every character in it is her. Um, so yeah, th there's that one. I think that's the first track on there. Um, Rendezvous Girl, of course the more uh, kind of retro 80s style one that I mentioned earlier. And Big Boss Money is really cool. I love the synth. It really, it <laughs> really seeps into your head, I would say. Um, yeah, really, really hypnotic. A lot of our, a lot of our stuff, I, I would say, is for sure. Oh, um, and there's one that's called uh, Walking in a Circle. That was, yeah, it's on 99 Cents on that album, of course, but it's also one of her, um, at the time, one of her more like serious sounding ones. Kind of has um, not necessarily sinister, but just a much darker tone compared to a lot of her stuff, which is usually more playful. Now, uh, her newest album, Spirituals, I would say, there, there's some stuff on there that kind of carries on with that song had going. Um, so this newest album, Spirituals, uh, it, it has songs like uh, the, the Witness. It's called The Witness, and I'm Not Ready. It, it's just some songs like that that are... Um, just in that similar uh, vein that are very, they, they almost have like, well, like season finale, <laughs> like quality, something you would hear like on a last episode of something, something that really wraps it up, but in a really like intense kind of a way. Um, so yeah, I, I love, I've always loved one of the heavier ones like that. And he asked, how did you first find out about her mirror music? I mentioned this at the beginning when I when I was talking about her, but I found her through the uh, similar artist section of Little Dragon's Last FM, and Little Dragon I found out or I found them through Gorillas. Yeah, Sonny Gold's uh, on uh, Warner Brothers, and if uh, and she's uh, she's been on Aesop Rocky. A song from him it's just a bunch of uh, different people stuff too so that's how i found out about her <laughs> which is weird because you it would be it would have been nice to have found out about her sooner just because of the fact that she's on warner brothers she's one of those pop artists that for whatever reason they I wouldn't say sweep under the rug but um definitely um don't give them i, I say nearly as much uh, promotion as they really deserve. So yeah, another um, another great uh, album is called "I Don't Want," and it's labeled as a mixtape or mix or whatever. But I I personally consider it an album. I mean, it's ten tracks. They don't sound like demos by any means. They're clearly like studio quality. Um, I think she said they're all ba they were all like a, um, it's all like just finished versions of stuff that she's kind of held on to and never really fully completed. So this is this is uh, that that record is just uh, everything, just all this old stuff kind of seeing the light of day. Now Wikipedia and. Uh, just all these websites it always calls spirituals you know her newest record the uh the fifth out or i'm sorry the fourth album 
but with I don't want, I, I would I would I would personally say is the fifth album. Um, I don't want is uh, also like the most themed out of all of her records. The other one, it's usually like varied. She has something different going on from song to song, and um, I don't want is a is a lot more on the the tropical side of things, um, like as a whole in that case. So yeah, if you if you like reggaeton, dance hall, like reggae type stuff, she explores the entirety <laughs> of of that whole side of things just within ten songs. A perfect life is a really pretty song on there. Um, Gold fire, that's the last track. Um, the first track too, coo coo coo. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just really feel good stuff. Love that record. Um, I'm sorry, mixtape. <laughs> um, that one's just free on her YouTube channel. But okay, what else? Okay, so and now I guess we're now we're on to her uh, her newest album. So I'll talk about that. It's called Spirituals. So it's ten tracks. Um, I, I do think it could have used at least one more. At least one more like kind of happier one to maybe like wrap it up um because even ones that are kind of i see like the the happiest one there is probably shake but even that one has more um like like a, a darker tone to it just the, like the way that the vocals are kind of structured the background vocals i mean um that's a tough to explain and, and and it's about like kind of uh you know moving on from things um yeah i love shake that's a really good track um the bait <laughs> the bass or whatever you call it that kind of synth is really um the way that it rolls <laughs> so, the way that it rolls I, that made no sense um yeah it's uh it, it's just good it's <laughs> Yeah, um, love that track. It's, a, it's it, She also takes it in a very like a southern kind of place. It has a very uh, kind of southern twang to it for sure. Um, it just her belty uh, voice is, is great in that one. And then No Paradise, her song No Paradise is also very tropical. But it's... <laughs> but it's about how there's no paradise. So it's another very... Um, kind of um sort of lyrically like sad kind of a track Funk, yeah. sorry i'm reading the chat i've been here for two hours okay But uh, yeah, uh, I would say my favorite, favorite track on her new album, Spirituals, it's called, yeah, it's called Ushers in the New World. Another one that is very, um, I don't say necessarily reggae, it's in that kind of territory. Um, but yeah, that, that one's just a really uh, gorgeous track. The lyrical, the lyrical aspect of it, if you know, when I'm listening to it and when I'm reading it, it's not too far off from uh, the, the, kind of what she talked about uh, in the Keepers. Um, so yeah, j definitely check that one out. Thank you, Captain Thunder. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and then uh, High Priestess is I uh, love that one. Another one I repeat a lot. Well, I repeat uh, Ushers of the New World a lot, of course, too. That one, um, it's more of a chill one. And then High Priestess is it's a way more like hard hitter <laughs> kind of a track.
and then uh, there's a track. Uh, her fir the first track on there is called My Horror. Um, that one, <laughs> again, it's yeah, it, it's just a, um, this is a kind of introverted kind of a song. Um, kind of kind of a song about like the chorus a part of it is just oh and just another day in my horror this is kind of a, a, a sarcastic look or that part of the song anyway and just look at just a, a look at things I mean and keep in mind this <laughs> this is a new album that she's been working on for two years during some of the craziest shit that we've seen in America <laughs> just and, and when I say that, I mean the the fact that a lot of it is happening all this almost every day, uh, and of course there's the COVID stuff on top of it. Um, so that's sort of like probably like what kind of uh, made her thought to kind of take it in more of a somber place this time around. Yeah. in the chat again. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah, for uh, for for 10 tracks, I, I'd say you no, know, it's just perfectly solid all the way through. Um yeah, just other fact that it would be nice to get like maybe at least one kind of happier um, <laughs> song. It is a very neutral kind of uh, vibes and a lot of that, I would say. But uh, yeah, but I always, I always love their stuff. So there's my whole <laughs> review or whatever you want to call it. What else have I been listening to? Shit. Yeah, th there was another album from somebody else who has been huge to me in the pop world as well. They're on RCA and Geffen Records. Uh, they're a band called Everything Everything. They're from Manchester. Um, there's always like a, a lot of different words like thrown around and people are, like trying to describe what kind of stuff they're. You could say math rock or prog pop or, or whatever the hell um i personally i just go with the, the term new new wave or newer wave uh because you listen to a lot of it it's not too far off like it's almost like a like a modern kind of version of you know new wave bands that you would hear in the 80s you know like duran duran or something like that and yeah everything everything they just came out with a new album too and why the hell do not do I not like remember what it was called? <laughs> All of a sudden. Okay, yeah, it's called Raw Data Feel. Another band with very interesting music videos. I get really <laughs> they like to get really sur surrealistic. Like the one for their song uh, "Photoshop Handsome." That's on their first album. It's called Photoshop. <laughs> Handsome, and the entire thing is uh, just a giant clusterfuck of a bunch of different artists messing with kind of the band, like messing around on green screen. A very fever dreamish. <laughs> yeah, I love all their music videos, but yeah, um, yeah, this new album is really good. Um, just like all their other albums, they. No, they just keep it varied. A lot of uh, super like uh, crazier tracks, and then more. Um, yeah, de definitely a lot more uh, kind of chill and introverted. And again, like kind of gorillas, like gorillas and Sonny Gold are uh, everything. Everything's uh, lyrics are also I would say a lot of uh, social political commentary. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, he he's just really good. <laughs> Um, 
yeah, he's just great lyrically and just really interesting, like kind of cryptic too, which is that like, like his language from song to song, um, <laughs> just how many words he's able to like cram into what one song. Um, I, I'm not making that sound right. He sings, uh, yeah, he's a good singer. Um, my favorite album from them is uh, probably, I really like their first one. It's called Man Alive. And then their second one is great too. Um, their second one, yeah, that came out right when I kind of discovered them. Like shortly. I think that wasn't when, when I was in like, uh, like towards the end of senior year. And then Art came out and then Get to Heaven, which... Sometimes I, I pick that. Sometimes I think of that one in my head as my favorite one. And then Other Moods is the first one. So he has a back and forth between both those two. But I think they have about five or six albums now. And uh, yeah, all their, all their stuff just kicks ass. Final Form is one of my favorite tracks from them. Cough Cough is really fucking good. Um get to heaven the song they have a song called fortune 500 <laughs> a song called zero pharaoh um yeah j just super intricate um type of kind of pop rock where they they really fit as much as, as they can into each song and they're, they're a four-piece band um and even in this newer record which is a little bit more electronic sounding they still use all four and and then what they do with it is just uh just really just super creative where where did that one come from i'm sorry <sighs> Yeah, so that's another been a band I've been listening to a bunch, especially since they came out with the new thing. Yeah, they have quite a lot. Birthday sex. Because I haven't heard it. Like, heard of it? I'll have to check that out. Yeah, I'll have this page up for later. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. I'll, yeah, I'll definitely check it out. I have it open on this tab. All right. So yeah, that's a <laughs> that's a lot of stuff that I've been listening to. Uh, those are the main things that I can think of, especially like recently, when I'm not on shuffle, of course. That's another thing I, I like to do when I'm listening to something. I'll just have just everything I listen to on shuffle. Yeah, at the end of this video, I will probably I'll probably uh, put links and stuff. In the, uh, in the description related to stuff that I've talked about. But one of those will... <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say just now. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, the stuff that I put, one of the things that I will put in it, I, I apologize, is uh, my Spotify playlist. 
my Spotify playlist. Is, I think it's over, yeah, it's over two 2,000 songs on there at this point. Since I'm usually an album person, a lot of the stuff I, I upload is in like full albums rather than just like one or two songs from each person. <laughs> my favorite artists are the ones that have just a huge discography of uh, just a world that they've kind of created, you know. Those are my favorite kind of artists. Just ones with albums that I've always liked all the way through. <laughs> wow, thank you. So yeah, the, the, the playlist, it's it's an it's just everything that I listen to. It's obviously not complete though. That because I'm always finding something that or I'm always remembering things like shit. I didn't put that in a playlist. <laughs> um, and then of course, when I do, I always update it. So it's a playlist you might like when you look at it, you can just like go back to it every once in a while. See if there's anything new on it. But yeah, there's it. There's a, there's no like theme or anything. It's just everybody I listen to of all styles. So the, yeah, there's a lot of rock in there. There's plenty of pop and uh, yeah, there, there's a decent amount of like kind of experimental pop and electronic. Pretty much everything from like Flying Lotus and, and a lot of those work people are on there. Classic rock, everything. And of course, I've been trying to look for a little bit more of the uh, the retro side of things on Spotify. All of 18 Carat Affairs stuff is on there. But with uh, some of these Vaporwave artists, not, not all of it is yet. Sometimes it has to do with like licensing your stuff. I mean, some of them do, some of them don't. Yeah, 18 Carat Affairs is another one with just a huge amount of songs. Like All of his albums are normally about what maybe like 20 to like sometimes 35 or 40 tracks most of them being kind of short but in a really good way like usually they're like a minute to a minute and a half but a really good uh, kind of uh short especially since a bunch of a bunch of them they're kind of loops um sort of kind of like loops that progress in a, a certain kind of way and then fade out <laughs> But yeah, I've always loved his stuff. Just super hypnotic. Okay, what do I want to talk about now? I don't want to talk about... I want to talk about fucking TV and shit. <laughs> Even though I haven't been watching a shitload of it, there's some shows I kind of will either have on the background or like kind of a little bit before I go to bed. Um, kind of make time to watch stuff, at least. What was I watching last night? I got two movies in. Well, two and a half. If, if you count Monster House because of the fact that I fell asleep in the middle of it, but I've seen that movie like a fucking thousand times already anyway. Yeah, great Halloween movies, fucking Monster House. Yeah, it's a it's an animated movie from like two thousand six. Uh, it it's just a fun one. It's a bunch of kids trying not to get eaten by this fucking pissed off house, <laughs> and it happened in this court. It takes place on uh, uh, Halloween Eve. Thank you. I'm surprised that I don't think that studio ever really did anything after that. It was just really that movie. Um, for a second, I thought it was like Polar Express, and then I go back to the, that studio, and I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> like Monster, uh, Monster House's styles, it's a, it's not nearly as uncanny valley as the way that the people look in Polar Express, but it's it's getting to that territory. <laughs> Yeah, the way that that movie, that Monster House is animated is that they have the actual actors in, like, a green suit with, like, balls, like, white balls and stuff, um, like, kind of attached to it. 
and then all the movements that they're making and of course their voice is then later animated into into the model you know for each character not a bad one. <laughs> oh yeah and the the voice of the villain is fucking uh, steve buscemi i'm like well, what else do you want <laughs> But yeah, that movie came out like what, like 2006? What was I like? In fifth or sixth grade? Yeah. So yeah, I watched that last night. Um, and then, of course, Prey, which I've never seen before. But that was a really good one. Mega Force 1982. Okay. I'll check it out. All right, so I've been here for almost three hours. I need to like stretch my legs, refill on water, pack my bowl, all that good shit. I want to talk about some more fucking TV. All right, we're back. We need a quick break. <laughs> and of course, if you're watching this like later, just fast forward. <laughs> yeah. So what's going on? All right, let's talk about fucking uh, TV. <laughs> Why not? This weed's really good. It's an indica dominant called... I think this one is the, uh, the Pure Michigan, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Pure Michigan. The one over there is Tokyo Snow. And then Wesley Snipes is another great <laughs> strain. They're all the very, very chillaxed, kind of sleepier ones. 
Yeah, Indica, the Indica hybrids and the straight Indicas all, have always been my favorite. Um, I've been trying edibles a little bit more too, like the gummies. The vibe floats are not bad at all. When they kick in, they like really kick in. Yeah, the float ones are the best. Those are the more, uh, yeah, those are the hybrid ones. So, all right, let's talk about Mother Bucking Frasier. Um, yeah, out of all the uh, the sitcoms that I like to binge a lot, Frasier recently has been like a huge one for me, especially this past year. I guess like over the years, like growing up, like, you'd see it on I'd see it on TV, but I never like watched it as extensively as I have been. And they're all on like Hulu and whatever else. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, Frasier, um, I think what lasted like a good 10 seasons. I'm only on like season seven <laughs> right now. Um, yeah, I, I haven't seen an episode of, I have not, I mean, I have not seen an episode that I didn't like. Um, and of course, uh, their cast has stayed the same. They, st they stayed the same cast from season one to the very last season. Um, I love Eddie. <laughs> they have they have a character named Eddie. He's a dog. Have you ever seen a My Dog's My Dog Skip with Kevin Bacon? He's a, the dog is in that uh, movie too. Oh yeah, Frankie Munoz is in that fucking movie. Um. Yeah, from another one of my my main or probably my favorite sitcom called Malcolm in the Middle. I'll probably talk about that in just a second. But um, for, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, Frasier has always had just the per just the, uh, really like the perfect kind of style of comedy <laughs> for me. There's a lot of great like um, there's just a lot of like great sarcasm in it, and of course, the kind of comedy where they does they don't always like talk. There's a lot of Frazier delivering his jokes with it in facial expressions. He's always been great at it. Um, I love how, like the fact that I, okay, there's a point in every episode of Frazier where he's working at his uh, his radio station and he's like a psychiatrist. Um. Who like he's a radio psychiatrist. He just answers people's like personal questions that they have going on in their lives. And but each but each caller is always voiced by like somebody like super famous. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, John Lithgow has done a voice in it. Uh, <laughs> Elijah Wood, when he was a kid, was one of the callers. <laughs> On that show, uh, yeah. Actually, should have got like a list because there's a shitload of people in there. Um, yeah. Great, great episode of Frasier. Um, I think it's the f like the first episode of season three. Uh, I think it's called "She's the Boss." Yeah, it's about the boss. Uh, she gets fucking pissed off at Frazier because he doesn't do, uh, want to do like the show <laughs> exactly how she's trying to direct him to do is like maybe do maybe start doing them getting to the more saucier saucier like calls more and start delving into sex more and, and he didn't feel like it so she moved into the like the 2 a.m <laughs> like time slot I love the part where the he's on the call with a lady who has insomnia but he is like asleep the whole time while she's talking about it. Mm, yeah, super good one. That's the one where Niles got a starter's pistol and while he's talking about it, it goes off in his hands while fucking Frazier is trying to sleep because he's got to go to work at it, 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 <laughs> 1 in the morning. Yeah, great one. Uh, sometimes I wonder if... Sometimes I wonder if Fraser is my favorite character on there, or if Martin is my favorite character on there. Martin is just always hilarious. Yeah, he plays his dad on that show. 
And of course, he's the one who owns Eddie, the dog. Yeah, I think that dog is just like one of the fun, like just one of the best like trained animals for like anything. He's in he's in every episode too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I've uh <clears throat> So many, man. It's it's hard to <laughs> it's a hard show to talk about sometimes. Oh, there's so much there, so much of it there is. Um, and Niles, of course, is a great character. All, all the the great running gag with him is his giant crush on uh, Martin's uh, <laughs> housekeeper Daphne. Daphne's great. Um, yeah, just a somewhat humble cast, and that the, the, they never never gets old. Um, again, from although I haven't seen past season eight yet, because I'm still on season seven, as far as I know, it, it just keeps getting better and stays better. It stays funny, and it's strange. Like like if you look through some of these TV stations, I don't think you really see Frasier as much on there anymore. Um. I definitely not <laughs> married with children, which sucks because I always like shows that I just I have a good set of balls like that. Um, because it's just weird that you there's certain ones like Frasier you don't see nearly as much as Seinfeld, which is still on on like every channel all the time, or Simpsons, which is basically a cartoon sitcom, and what the Big Bang Theory, <laughs> all that stuff. I mean, yeah, sure, sure, they're funny, but they're not the only shows out there. Is what I'm trying to say. So, yeah, and, and, and Niles Crane, uh, Frazier's brother on that show is... <laughs> yeah, he's hilarious. And on that show, he plays... Frazier's... It, it, his brother, he's also a psychiatrist, but he's more of an actual, like, um, sit-in with people kind of profession <laughs> so he likes to give Fraser shit for being a radio psychiatrist <laughs> or is it therapist radio therapist which either which either one yeah uh Niles has a noticeable temper <laughs> well actually Fraser does too like even though it's supposed it, like it's a show about a, ther a therapist, basically. It's the show's about him going out of his fucking mind. So there's a lot of yelling in it, a lot of, <laughs> but in like a really good way. Um, there was one episode that was. It was always strange to me, just the way that it ended, and it's kind of in my head because of the fact that the fact that I talked about Tony Shalhoub earlier, and he's in the in that episode. I forget what it's called. It might be just called "I Don't Like It" or whatever, but. Yeah, uh, Tony Shalhoub plays a character in that episode where he's part of a focus group talking about Frasier's show, and everybody loves the show except for Tony Shalhoub's character. Uh, he's like, I don't, I don't like him. He's like, why don't you like him? I, he's just okay. I don't like it very much. So Frasier, even though seeing that everybody else liked. Like to show it really ate him up about that one guy, Tony Shalou, because of the fact that he didn't say why he liked it. He's just, I don't like it. So that episode is him just like just downright being like creepy, like stalking this, guy. <laughs> like stalking this guy and, and trying to get like Martin and Niles to like snoop around for him so he can find exactly like why he didn't like his show. Of course, he, he finds him and he's like, why don't you like my show? I was like, I, <laughs> because I think you're a smutty pants. And he's like, um, he, he says he's annoying basically. And of course, again, is like kind of, um, yeah, he just cuts it short really. And so of course, if Frazier is still trying to like talk to him, but he's outside of this, of Tony Shalhoub's like his character, like his newsstand. So, 
through a weird, hard to explain series of Mr. Bean <laughs> screw ups. Uh, he ends up setting he accidentally setting his fucking newsstand on fire. One of my favorite quotes on that show is just Niles seeing it and going, Oh my God, he set his newsstand on fire. <laughs> yeah. Um, as he sets the fuck on fire, and then at the end, Fra <laughs> Fraser is like, "Well, now I don't. Uh, well, at least now I know uh, why you don't like my show or whatever." It was just a super. Uh, oh, well. <laughs> now I know at least, and then he just walks off for why the fucking newsstands on, <laughs> why the uh, the uh, the fire guys are there. It's it was just an odd way to end, <laughs> just end it compared to the others where it's usually more um has like kind of a like a point or a message well this one did have a message but part of the message is that Fraser was a douche <laughs> just really I don't know yeah it's still pretty good though Of course, the first episode is a great way to start the whole thing, too. Mm. Love the one with the guy uh, trying to run for or re, uh, get reelected uh, for what, like senator or whatever in Seattle. And he. <laughs> yeah, this is a great one because of how like terrified Frazier ends up of this guy after he, he tells him because he's a psychiatrist, he feels safe enough to tell Frazier that, that uh, he was once abducted by UFOs and they talked to him about the various going on in politics on their planet. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a super good one. So, yeah. If you like comedy show, if you like sitcoms, the Frasier is a great one. Um, and of course, <clears throat> of course, I, I've talked about, I've, I've probably talked about Fresh Prince plenty, but that Fresh Prince might be like my favorite, favorite. Yeah, Fresh Prince and Malcolm in the Middle are probably side by side. Um, and then a King of the Hill is, of course, uh, in The Simpsons, they're good, like cartoon sitcoms. <clears throat> a situational comedy. Yeah, they, not, not every show has... The sitcom has a laugh track. So uh, Malcolm in the Middle is one of the, the main examples. Um, and of course, Brian Cranston is hilarious in that show. Um, so yeah, and then another show, that another comedy show that I've been watching a lot of, I don't think... I don't remember ever seeing all of the last season, but it's a show called Everybody Hates Chris. <clears throat> and yeah, it, it also, if you like Malcolm in the Middle and uh, Arrested Development, those kind of like wackier um, comedy shows, it, yeah, it, it's definitely one of the ones up there for me. Like, since I was, what was I like in the fifth? Yeah, it was like in the fifth grade, fifth or sixth grade when that show came out. And yeah, it's just a show that's just always hold up, hold up just super well. Even if you don't like, like even if you don't like Chris Rock, it's um, it is it's still funny. I mean, he's the narrator; he's not the only writer. Um, but but yeah, I've <laughs> I've always per personally loved his uh. His narration in the show. Uh, something that I was <laughs> thought funny with both Everybody Hates Chris and Arrested Development is an episode for Chris where even though Chris Rock is the narrator, he played Chris's counselor in the show. Because Everybody Hates Chris is about you know Chris Chris Rock as a kid, um, and just it, you know him him growing up going to an all white uh, school and just his family. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> I love Rochelle. She might be my favorite character on the show. Um, Ter Terry Crews um, <laughs> is one of, one of the funniest people out there. He's on. The, um, he's the dad on that show. Um, 
Yeah, it's a show that does cutaways too, but way better than Family. Because <laughs> they're they're super quick. They don't go on and fucking on like Family Guy does. Um Hey, what's up? So yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, what I was saying is that yeah, I, I thought <laughs> I liked the kind of like confusing like confusing in a funny way when you'd have Chris doing the narrator, but playing a character on an episode. So you hear both of the same voice at the same time. And Arrested Development did that with, I think season four, they had Ron Howard. Ron Howard is always their narrator, but then they, they had him narrate at the same time where he played himself, you know, Ron <laughs> It's <laughs> that's that's a great show just because of how like confusing some of it is to explain. Like they really just get like weird with it. <clears throat> but yeah, just funny hearing both of them talk, both of the same person talk at the same time. I always like this. There's really funny like gags like that. No, another one that uh, I like that Arrested Development does when uh, like somebody will start cursing a lot, but it, it'll just censor it to the clue. You have no idea what they're talking about. And on the DVD, it's still bleeped out. <laughs> so the joke is like, you have no clue. what the fuck. Um, so. Yeah. <clears throat> Everybody hates Chris is a great one. What others? Oh, <laughs> always sunny in Philadelphia is really fucking funny. It, if you, yeah, if you like, if you like those comedy compilations and stuff on YouTube, always sunny is probably the king of like those like kind of rapid fire compilations. Like that one, it's like one Mac quote from every episode. It's each one like super quick. <laughs> Hold on, punk. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Um, yeah, always sunny is, uh, it's, it's like the person, the perfect type of stupidity is a perfect type of <laughs> just really overboard every once in a while. Um, yeah, they're, they're really good at it. Um, Danny DeVito's as Frank is just one of the fucking funniest people on the planet. And one of my favorite uh, quotes in a show, we said the great, uh, at a graveyard is like, I don't, that's not my future. I don't want to be buried in a grave. When I'm dead, just throw me in the trash. <laughs> One of my favorite quotes from him involved the word trash for some reason. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, Malcolm in the Middle, I did a uh, Malcolm in the Middle compilation recently on my channel jason sanders 2. so right now that's all like just stuff from shows so if it gets copyright <laughs> screwed then i mean i still have this channel at least so that's that's stuff um from tv shows that i have mostly like discovered haven't um you know, aren't heavily what's the word like protected or whatever. Um, Frasier, surprisingly, is one of them. So yeah, there are a few uh, ones that I put on there. Um, like minute minute or two minute long things um, that, that, that apparently that should... <laughs> there are some shows, I guess, after extended, uh, a long enough period of time, like NBC or whatever channels, they just stop caring as much. And a lot of shows that are just straight up on full episodes on there. Like, what was that one show? Queen Latifah, that sitcom. I think it's called Living Single or something. My, my, girlfriend, my girlfriend watches a lot of it. Um, yeah. What else? So, yeah, the uh, <laughs> I got a Malcolm Middle compilation on there. It's all this stuff, a bunch of different stuff from season four. I was like, though, the, the I like always doing the uh, rapid fire ones, or it's just like super quick. <laughs> 
So yeah, the, the another one that I would plan on doing for it, probably everybody hates Chris. Is just do a super quick uh, compilation of stuff from that. There's a lot of great, great quick jokes on that show. Um, Third Rock from the Sun, definitely another one I would do. I love that show. Okay, that's the point where I'm kind of running out of stuff to talk about. Um, uh, wait, what, what kind of shit, other shit have I been watching? I, I rewatched The Breakfast Club for the millionth fucking time. <laughs> yeah, a bunch of movies that I've been watching recently, a lot of them are ones that I like rewatched after not seeing for a while. But yeah, The Bre Breakfast Club is like one of the main, main 80s movies for me, for sure. And one that I really hope does not get remade or rebooted ever. Some movies that it's it's they can just stay that one movie, leave it alone. <laughs> hmm, that could work. All right. Shit. What all can I say about Breakfast Club that hasn't been said? Um, I love movies like that that uh, that mostly take place in like the same area. You know, Breakfast Club. It's all it's all in detention. Saturday detention at high school. So the, the most of it. it the whole movie is just kind of the conversations, the conversation between uh, these five characters. Um, and of course, them uh, <laughs> trolling the principal, basically. Well, the principal's a douche, but... Yeah, the principal's great in that movie. And... Oh, I forgot. Fuck it. The guy that played the principal and the breakfast club, he was in like one episode of Mal Malcolm in the Middle. It was one of the episodes of uh, those uh, Reese joins the army episodes. Where, where yeah, Reese joins the army, but the other storyline in those episodes was with <laughs> Hal being accused for some shit by his, uh, by his job. I think a job, by the way, which they never actually tell you like what they do. <laughs> I was like, that. shit like that. But yeah, he, he played like the, the guy who played the principal in Breakfast Club was like the boss who, uh, who basically j tried to uh, um, place all the fucking blame on Hal. <laughs> and somewhere along the lines, Hal is, is trying to defuse a bomb on the run. Uh, <laughs> I'll just I'll just let you watch it. I don't need to <laughs> I spoil the whole thing if you haven't seen it. Of course, if you like Breaking Bad, but for for whatever strange reason haven't <laughs> seen Malcolm in the Middle, watch it. Malcolm in the Middle is uh is. It's, it's an official Breaking Bad prequel. I'm just but uh, yeah, it's, it's Brian Cranston. As hell, he's he's one of the funniest people out there. <laughs> yeah. I was wondering what was going on with the jock in the breakfast club. Because there was a point where everybody's smoking weed. And then they start dancing, you know, the famous <clears throat> the dance montage, montage. But the jock, he was smoking weed, but he was in, like, a, another room at the time when everybody else was smoking in, like, that main kind of chill-out area. And 
He was not high. He he was not like weed high. He was like on coke or steroids or something. I mean, I mean, he's a joke, but I don't know. I, I just feel like maybe the, the, there's more going on in that character. And then of course there definitely is with the uh, the, the uh, what's her name, Allison, I think, because <clears throat> no one is really like exactly sure what. What, what she did if she really because yeah she said oh i'm i'm here because i had nothing else to do but she also in the same movie said that she's a path pathological liar <laughs> oh okay he said sativa high yeah okay yeah maybe the jock was on like strong sativa <laughs> so so coke bait and no, i'm just kidding um sativa very keen to or akin to downing like three Red Bulls. <laughs> That's coming from me. Like I'm an Indica like hybrid person. So um, that might be why. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Sativa definitely is. It's good the most for like. If like if you have shit to do. Helps you with focus for sure. Here's one of the uh, these gummies I was talking about. They're called Vibes V Y B. So this is the float one, and the fade was somewhere that that those are the purple ones. But yeah, float is a it's like indica dominant kind of a high. They're gummies. And so this is what, like 50 per, 50 per, per gummy. They actually do me pretty well through, uh, through work too. So, I mean, they're called throat <laughs> floats. So they really help you like kind of float through whatever you're doing. Just super chilled out one. And then of course the fade, it's that purple one that I have that one, um, it's straight indica, so it's basically like a sleeping potion. And then what was their red one? That, that's the boost straight sativa. And then peak peak is the uh, sativa dominant. That one's more for like kind of focus in general. But floats are, are, are my main thing. I love that nice, strong, like both body high and really um, head high, especially, especially uh, for music, of course. No, I just feel uh, weed has really enhanced music for me. It, I mean, that's what it does. It enhances your, is your senses, but with music, it's been a little bit more specially on. What's another movie I watch? Hmm. Watched a movie called What's Eating Gilbert Grape. That was on Netflix. I watched it on something. But that was a movie that before I rewatched it, I hadn't seen it since I was like watching it with what, like my mom when I was like a young teen or something. But yeah, What's What's Eating Gilbert Grape is a really good uh like kind of early nineties movie. It stars Johnny Depp. And it's a movie where Leonardo DiCaprio got his start. For the most part, he was a um, the Leonardo. He played like a mentally handicapped uh, kid in that show, where he's uh, Gilbert Grape's brother. So Gilbert Grape is uh, Johnny Depp's character. And that movie is just is Gilbert and his brother and his family, and. And his friends and just the <laughs> the shit that uh, Gilbert has to deal with is just every day to day life in this small kind of rural town. Um, I wouldn't say there's 
the plot is that there's a bunch of sh different plots going around at the same time. Um, uh, yeah, just the sh uh, just him taking care of his brother, his job, um, yeah, his mom and his sister, just all the shit that he's kind of juggling at the same time. Uh, <laughs> this ch this the uh, this older lady, like cougar lady, that's trying to fuck him. Um, so he is <laughs> sort of terrified of the guy that who knows that they're sleeping around, you know, her husband. <laughs> so, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, what's eating Gilbert Grape? <laughs> He's got that classic scene where Leonardo, he doesn't really feel like putting up with shit anymore, you know, his character. So he goes up, um, he just climbs up to the top of a wa the water tower over there. <laughs> so it's got that quote, Johnny Depp going, come on, <laughs> come on back down. <laughs> it's, it's great, it's a good scene. Get down from the tower. Because <laughs> at that point, like it, it, Gilbert's like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> what the shit? Um, but yeah, it's uh, it, there's a lot of there's a lot of humor in it, but there's uh, it's it's not necessarily like a, a comedy overall kind of a movie. Um, there's a couple parts that can be really sad for sure. But very bitter, bittersweet kind of uh, a movie. Yeah, uh, so yeah, it, it it's it's just an interesting uh, movie. A lot of the scenes in there, and oh, one good scene is uh, him and his friends eating dinner at the at the uh, at the cafe, and it's the fact that the two friends that, that are talking. Um, <laughs> One's talking about it, just him doing all his odd jobs, mowing lawns and shit on the country uh, around town. And the other one talking about him working at the morgue and them just basically him only talking about working at the morgue and him only talking about um, doing all his odd jobs and repairing shit while Johnny Depp's character Gilbert Grape is just kind of sitting there going... Yeah, <laughs> this, this is funny, especially the fact who the, his two friends are. I didn't mention that. The guy, <laughs> the guy from the morgue, is um, is played by I forget his name, but he played Marty McFly's dad in Back to the Future. And then the other the other um, guy <laughs> is John C. Riley, because of course it's John C. Riley. You know, a, a movie is going to be interesting when he's in it. Even if you don't like it, like it's fucking John C. Really, you'll watch it. <laughs> Thank you, Meg. <laughs> the Cougar, okay. Yeah, Chomster said the Cougar, the teacher, and uh, Gilbert Grape was in powder and she was the mom and several she was yeah <laughs> powder is a really good one jeff goldblum was great in that movie well i mean jeff goldblum was great and fucking everything <laughs> yeah jeff goldblum is definitely one, like one of my favorite actors out there for sure he's super good in jurassic park Thank you. Well, good to see you. Okay. Games. When I'm able to, I've been playing some stuff. <laughs> stuff here and there, yeah. Um, the, the main things that I've been playing uh, is Cuphead, uh, SSX again, 
of course, and then um, uh, Need for Speed. This, uh, not the super newer ones, because I don't know if my laptop can even play those. I'll have to try at some point. But yeah, Rivals is that main one, the main one that I've been playing the most. Hot Pursuit is really good. But yeah, really, really good ones where um, you're just in this huge, like, kind of expansive, um, like, basically island. <laughs> you drive wherever you want. Uh, start a race whenever you want. Um, the SSX games I've been playing. The, for those of you who don't know, those are snowboarding games from EA Big. But yeah, um, on tour, uh, tricky, and SSX three are the ones that I play the most. On tour is the the fourth one. Tricky is the second one. Yeah, yeah. The, the those are a lot of fun. A shitload of replayability. Um, for me, especially with those those kind of games like Need for Speed or Tony Hawk. Or you know SSX, where the the main uh, <laughs> the main object of the game is just to get a good score, and then of course everything in between. So yeah, I like games like that, kind of arcade type stuff that uh, just involves a lot of <laughs> getting better over the years. <clears throat> And then the other game I've been playing is uh, Cuphead, the uh, the DLC that uh, that came out during the summer. It, what, was it like a good three or four months ago at this point? And I still haven't fucking beat it. It's one that I've just been kind of going back to when I can. I haven't beat like the spider boss, like mob boss. I mean, I've beat him. The, <laughs> It's one of those where there's three different bosses. So I've beat him, but at the very end, there's like a fucking ant eater that comes out of nowhere. And that part, I haven't uh, beat him yet. Beat the mountain man, like the Bigfoot looking guy. And then, of course, like the other one that I'm stuck on right now is like that airplane level where you're on. Um, <laughs> you're on an airplane <laughs> getting shot at by fucking dogs. It's a good one. It's there's a point towards the it, towards the end of it where you get, start getting shot by like lasers and shit. Um, I'll get better. I'll get better. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's that's the the main level I haven't finished yet. I beat the one with the wizard. Yeah, the wizard and the the giant snowflake that comes out at the end. Yeah, super challenging. And it's finally it's just fun to like finally get to play these levels after just such a huge like kind of a wait. I think it got postponed at least twice, but at least it's here. Let's see. <clears throat> That's mainly that's mainly it in games. Uh, another one I'm playing of um, I like the Zelda stuff. So uh, parallel worlds for the DS. I keep going back to that one. Of course, that one's it's not an arcadey one. It's more like a story. Very it it, it obviously like it demands your that kind of game demands your attention. Which is why I tend like when I play it, I like to play it in like for, like for hours <laughs> until I get tired of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, actually, like most of my favorite stuff from the Zelda world is actually the top down ones. Um, and then, yeah, Link to the Past is that main one that I finished. That one's for Super Nintendo. Um, Four Swords is a great one. That one's for GameCube. And then... Yeah, there's one for Game Boy. Uh, there's Oracle Seasons. Um, and then another one that goes along with it. 
Oracle of something of ages. I don't remember. And then, of course, Link's Awakening. Yeah, super fun ones. And uh, unfortunately, I haven't got to play the, the new uh, remake yet that's on the Switch because I don't have a Switch. <laughs> I have an emulator, uh, emulator on, uh, on this laptop that plays. I have it running uh, PlayStation 2, um, which is how I'm able to get like SSX and all that stuff on there. I got the, Pr the Prince of Persia stuff for it recently, too. But... Yeah, it plays the Wii U emulator great. So like, if you're playing something like Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze... Most of that stuff I know I haven't had a problem with at all. Maybe if it know if you're in like a boss battle, it'll slow down for a second until it gets used to the game. Yeah, for the Wii U, oh, what's that emulator called? I think it's called Simu. Something like that. But <laughs> yeah, the the point that I'm making is that in terms of a switch emulator it's not perfected yet that i know of and in terms of buying one i mean <laughs> there's other stuff to think about like buying buying a switch is something i would do like if i just have money to spare or that i want to spare <laughs> Um, but as far as I know, the Switch Lite is what only maybe like what two hundred something bucks, which is whatever. I might do that. But uh, yeah, I, honestly, like I've I've seen the Switch Lite up close, and it looks a lot better. It, just the way that it works is a lot better than me to compared to the main kind of the Switch. Because those controllers on the side, they've always just seemed kind of like flimsy to me. And all those games where they make you play it like with just one little thing, like this tiny version of a an NES controller or something, is it's weird. But the, the Switch Lite is much more like a Wii U, which is a giant Game Boy Advance. It, <laughs> the controls are built in, so. It doesn't fall out on you. <laughs> Okay, now some used YouTube stuff I've been watching. I've um, been watching a lot of Ghost Files. It's a show what these guys called. Um, they're, they're called Ryan and Shane. They're uh, for, from a a, cha a a channel on YouTube called Watcher. It's them and a couple other guys. And they just make all kinds of stuff. But Ghost Ghost Files is Ryan and Shane uh, just doing ghost hunting stuff. Like they, they go to all these like haunted mansions and like uh, hospitals and stuff, and even if you don't, even even if ghost uh, ghost hunting isn't uh, your kind of thing, and normally it isn't really mine either, but Ryan and Shane, like they make it really funny. Um, like they're hilarious. Yeah, yeah, there's just a super great do it. And there's sometimes that there's some points where they just start cursing at the ghosts. It's like, oh, oh, you, uh, <laughs> you weren't saying shit earlier, and now all of a sudden you're chatty, Kathy. <laughs> yeah, they have a uh, fucking like machines that kind of like can, can like kind of interpret what the ghosts might be saying. Of course, there's the one, I forget if it's Ryan or Shane, but it's the one who uh, doesn't actually really even believe in ghosts, so he's the skeptic of it. And then, of course, they have uh, they have another really good um, series. What's it called? I think it's just called Spirits, but they, they drink spirits, use a shit ton of booze, and then they read ghost stories that people send in. <laughs> And uh, yeah, they, they're yeah, they just have like a, a perfect kind of chemistry. Uh, super mouth, foul mouthed too. Don't watch it in front of your uh, whoever. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, then I've been watching a uh, YouTuber I've been w watching for a long time. His name is Daz Black. Daz Black. It's like a British... He used to be a British Viner, and now he's just fully on YouTube, now that Vine isn't really <laughs> of a thing uh, as much. But, and of course, all of his own Vines are on his, uh, his channel now, too. Um, yeah, when I was looking at Vine, like, I've always been just super picky of a lot of those Viners, but Daz Black, in my opinion, is like the cream of the crop, really. <laughs> One of the main ones. So his stuff on YouTube now... He's got Daz games, so he's, he plays a lot of games, mostly like really, <laughs> there's like really silly like indie stuff, and yeah, he makes it funny. But but then the the other stuff he looks at is uh, I'm trying to think of some people. There's really silly people, there's really dumb people on the internet. He's really funny with it. Um, so he looks at that. He'll he'll look at um, weird documentaries and shit. <laughs> so yeah, he's a reactioner, but he's the kind of reaction he actually like talks about everything. You know what I mean? If you like Penguin Z, he's not too far off. Awesome. Yeah, I wish it, I, I wish they still made SSX games. <laughs> Definitely, uh, because notice it, notice this trend, especially with Tony Hawk and some of these games. They're coming back and they're uh, enabling like online play and stuff. I think the SSX would be the perfect ones to kind of kind of go back. And not just remaster, but it'd be cool to have like make it a more of an open world thing where you can combine all the first four of those SSX games like kind of together, and then and kind of combine all the characters that were in all of them. My favorite one was Zoe personally. Um, and Moby's cool. Uh, they're all cool. Yeah, it, it's just strange that with all, all these remasters coming out, like, what, they did the trilogy for, uh, remaster trilogy for Spyro, Crash. I think they did it for, uh, what, Diablo and all those uh, games. So, yeah, this is a perfect time to, for, like, for EA to just get off their ass. <laughs> That's the thing, though. EA owns them. That's the problem. Cinema Snob is another YouTuber I like, Brad Jones. He uh, he, re he reviews movies, another uh, another uh, kind of comedy oriented one. He, he reviews all kinds of weird <laughs> shit, both kind of known and unknown. Uh, since twenty twenty, I think twenty twenty, I think he did a video called Nineteen Eighty in Film. Film. So nineteen. This was about four four hours long. It's just him just doing a brief, it's just a super like in depth, you know, talk about movies from that, um, from that one year, 1980. And then, of course, 1981, or I'm sorry, in 2021, uh, he did a video, say also four hours, 1991 in film. And now he just kept going. I think he's done the 1982 in film this year. Um, so yeah, they're all super long. So it's just basically just a huge kind of series of him, <clears throat> of him reviewing just a bunch of different movies from that year. Cause of course I know a lot of people on here, they like retro stuff. So, and if you like, like stuff like red letter media, where they look a, a lot like at a lot of like obscure, um, the strange B movies and stuff. It'll be up your alley for sure. Rebecca 
said too many said too many spirits. Yes, that's that's the name of the Ryan and Shane uh, show. Yeah, go, ghost files and then too many spirits. They drink hella booze and read ghost stories. But yeah, thank you, Rebecca. So. That's pretty much the main thing. Yeah, I mean, not the main thing, but all the main shit that I want to talk about. <laughs> Music, TV, just stuff I've been doing or working on. So yeah, three hours, a good 30 minutes. <laughs> Whoa, dude. Says, what's up, dude? Hey, what's up? I'm doing all right. <laughs> Been here talking for more than three hours. Yeah, it's been fun though. Yeah, I might I think I might wrap it up in a little bit. I thought about doing like a giant like fucking like Stranger Things season four kind of a review. Maybe. Like if I do, I might make it brief. And of course I'll I'll have it at the very end of the mix. And not the mix. <laughs> but this live stream so that uh no, nobody gets like shit spoiled for them. <clears throat> what else am I doing? Listen to way more pop music, I would say. Been listening to a lot of those colors shows. Another another thing that Little Dragon is on. Uh, Billy Eilish is, I think, their their most uh, viewed video. She did a song on there too, I think. There's a bunch of different artists that have been done like two songs for them. Yeah, a bunch of different good, uh, good ones. Ari Lennox is a good one there. I've just been listening to a, a lot of more like kind of <clears throat> like a lot of uh, potter, modern pop. Like my girlfriend got me into H E her a lot more than ever before. H E R she she has a song called uh, Damage, which is. For people who like who like vaporwave, the instrumental in that song isn't too far off at all. Like I'm sure it definitely samples something like from the late '80s, but it's a more like say like it's kind of like a more of a hi-fi version of it. Yeah. What else she's been listening to? Um, she likes Celine, Solange. Um, And then of course all the older uh, older people like uh, Bobby Brown, Whitney Houston, uh, shit, New Edition, everybody. So she like recognizes pretty much anything from a vaporwave song at this point. Yeah, she's like a uh, a soul and pop connoisseur, an encyclopedia, if you will. So, what else? Kenny G is a fucking P. Oh, um, sorry. Yeah, Solange has 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 been one who I've been listening to a bunch, somewhat recently. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so Solange Knowles. She is a Beyonce's sister, and her her vocal style is somewhat similar. Um, but she she gets a lot a lot more on the alternative side. A little smokier with the the instrumentals. Um, if you've if you like a lot of Flying Lotus, a lot of the beats on her albums are not too far off. They're like like sort of in that ballpark for sure. The uh, Bins is a really good song for her for sure. Cranes in the Sky is pretty. I mean, all of it's great, but uh. Yeah, her last two or three albums, they're very, like, conceptual, like, they have a lot of interludes and stuff, um, kind of presented, like, this big, like, kind of, uh, I don't know what to call it, story, <laughs> but, yeah, really creative shit.
I'm sorry. Just a second. Somebody's been texting me the whole time, and I've had my my phone muted because I was in class earlier today. Son of a bitch. Okay, just a second. Okay, so yeah, I, I'm i pretty much like wrapping it up at this point. There's not a whole lot. <clears throat> that I can think of, but uh, yeah. I think after this, I, I'll kind of like go to the description and edit. Uh, I got to put in all of the uh, links to stuff I mentioned, basically. So, and then I'll have the uh, the, the link to uh, just my huge like Spotify playlist. It's just everything, number no little <laughs> theme, and then uh, a link to my uh, my archive on Mega, which is uh, a bunch of the different mixes. Um, not all of them are on there yet, but I'm I'm working on it. <laughs> so I said the most recent ones of the past few years are on there. So when I say download, I mean like, uh, um, <laughs> I don't remember what I was talking about. If somebody remind me, what the hell was I just talking about? No one just reading the chat some more. If y'all have any questions, let me know. Oh, okay. I know what I was talking about. I think I was saying, yeah, I have an archive on Mega of just stuff that you can download. All my mixes, uh, not all of them so far, but uh, a lot of the vaporwave ones, a lot of the electronic ones. Those are the main ones. Oh shit, I forgot. I also did like a, a kind of archive on Mega too uh, for for Soul Coughing and all their uh, non album tra non album tracks. So coughing is a band is a band from the '90s that I discovered on Cartoon Network. They would play music videos, and uh, there were a couple of them that uh, had soul coughing songs like "Rolling" and then uh, "Circles." So, 
they have a really a really good amount of uh, stuff that they, they haven't put in their other in their main records their main three records a lot of stuff kind of like strung across <laughs> the internet and like tapes in a couple cases too <clears throat> like a visual kind of tape that I guess they play, they played in their concerts that was all like cut up stuff from like uh, MGM and Looney Tunes and Bosco cartoons and stuff like that that really fits their sound for sure so that the <laughs> That archive, the link can be found on the, there's there, uh, stuff that I've uploaded on my channel here recently. I think it was a couple months ago. Yeah, it was either August or September. <laughs> yeah, Ramona, there you go. You're welcome for Brain Trainer <laughs> 3000, yeah. I love that mix, and I'm glad that YouTube finally like unblocked it for whatever. <laughs> what I uh, Kenny G's a piece of shit, and then uh, the Stranger. I think I'll talk about like Stranger Things, kind of before I kind of wrap it up. <laughs> so if you if you're gonna leave, so if, if you don't want to get get shit foil, uh, spoiled for you, then uh, um, I guess this is the end of the video for you. <laughs> So yeah, here goes. Yeah, season four of Stranger Things was. Yeah, like like season three it had a shitload of just great stuff, and it was just really good at introducing you know kind of new characters. Um, like season three had uh, had Robin, like for example, and yeah, she quickly became like kind of one of my main favorite characters on the show. Um, Jim Hopper is probably my main, main favorite. Yeah, Jim Hopper and probably Dustin. Um, so then season season three, or I'm sorry, season four, we get Argyle and Eddie. One or two other people, I think, but mainly Argyle and Eddie. And yeah, this season explores a lot it, it goes into like kind of uh, eleven story much more like there's an episode called papa where we finally kind of get even more of an explanation of what kind of is going on with <clears throat> like sort of what the monster and the upside down is and who exactly uh, you know vecna is and kind of like who this monster was so, yeah, if you want me to spoil it, since, I mean, this is the end of the video. Yes, yeah, it's, it's the guy, um, a guy called Henry, who, who took care of Eleven <clears throat> when she was trained um, on, on these powers that she had. And, of, of course, the, uh, the other kids there that had it. And it appears this... these powers or whatever you call it, it started from Henry. So Papa started trying to like extract whatever he has in the other people. So uh, Eleven and all those people, they, they're they obviously not, <laughs> um, you know, they're obviously not his kids or anything. They're like uh, people that he took from various parents, I guess that he felt <laughs> didn't uh, need them as much as he did. Um, but yeah, but most of that part we, we already knew, but in terms of um, kind of what the hell exactly the upside down monster is. Yeah. Henry was a really cool character. Great actor too. This whole season has introduced me into so many people that I just, these actors I've just never heard of. Like Joseph Quinn, who played Eddie, um, he was just like instant, like instantly likable. Like in that first, like within that first scene, um, yeah, Ar Argyle's hilarious. He's the the pizza guy, <laughs> the friends with Jonathan. I love that whole dinner table scene where Jonathan's like, "What? 
What? That's the point where Jonathan, like, he moves to California with, uh, you know, with a mom and L and Will, who again doesn't do a whole lot in this <laughs> season. Um, this is just fucking wasted out of his mind. And yeah, he, it, him and Argyle are like great com- comic relief in that. I mean, there's always been like great comedy in it, but Argyle, Argyle just c- cracks me the fuck up in the show. And all right, so yeah, I love his music choice. Everybody has in the show has, has like good music choices. Although, like, like uh, you know, the, like, the licensed songs that will play on the background, like whenever so and so is on screen. I always liked Billy's too, from season two and three. He was always having like a lot of, uh, like he had a song from the Cars called "Moving in Stereo." One of the songs that was playing, uh, one of my favorite classic rock songs out there. He's been listening to Metallica all that, sh- Metallica and all that shit. Eddie also listens to Metallica. Um, his personality is—it's almost like a piece of like kind of everyone. And of course, he loves Iron Maiden, all the metal stuff. Argyle is, because Eddie is a stoner too. He sells weed and whatever other shit, but Argyle is like the reggae, like Bob Marley stoner. I mean, fuck, he's he's the piece, he's the pizza driver. What do you expect? Oh, and of course, he's in California. But yeah, that was a thing that was uh, them moving to California. It, me thinking when I when I saw that in like the finale of season three, is like okay, you know, uh, Winona Ryder is great, and she, she she's moving to California with L. But uh, why didn't they do that like in season one? When I saw that, oh, <laughs> oh fucking Hawkins is cursed as shit. Maybe we should get the hell out of here. But then, of course, now we're, we're at the point where it's like the more like a worldwide kind of threatening situation, of course. Right. Women were impregnated. It was explained in season. That, that's right. Yeah. I was trying to like I can explain it very well, but that, that's right. <sighs> Shit. Okay, so... I'll start the, some other stuff that I liked about the season. I loved Dustin in this season. He he definitely brought every he definitely I would say saved everyone's ass in this season and the last season. Um, just kind of super integral into like all the missions, kind of like that main kind of character that. Um, it's really kind of get trying to get shit done when say like a lot of the other characters are like at the same time going through like personal shit like you know like Mike you know with L or Lucas with Max and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, Dustin kicked ass in this. Um, him and uh, what was his name Steve? Yeah, Steve Harrington. Fun, hilarious together as always. Yeah. All right, here's here's the main thing I hated about this season. That kind of kept it from being <laughs> um, kind of having a, a, not as much as a payoff as I would have liked. Okay, the fact that, uh, yeah, they, they killed off Eddie. The character that they brought, that they literally brought in for that season. So, so he was there since uh, the first episode of season four, like kind of a new character, and they established as him being like, like a guy the, who who always went to that school or whatever, this is fine. But uh, j- just to like kill him off after they gave him such like noticeable, I don't know, stage time basically. Like he was huge on that. He, I think he was on that show or, or in that season a little bit more than some of the other new characters were, like Argyle. Um. So yeah, I was just really I was not expecting that. And like I knew that they yeah, they have a 
a thing for giving us a really cool new character and then just killing him off. Like, especially with Bob, with Bob Newby um, from, uh, from season two. And right. Okay. She beat me to it. But yeah, yeah, I was I wasn't expecting it, but just because at that point, okay, I knew they like killing off people. They're not going to kill Eddie because that would be really, f really repetitive and formulaic if they did that, and then they did it. <laughs> so I don't know. It was silly. I liked Eddie. I wanted uh, I wanted like at least one episode where everyone finally like from California and then Hawkins meets. It would be cool to like see Eddie and Argyle, like it, at least say something or like hang out. I just like those two sides of like the stoner um, or coin. You know what I mean? And uh, I, and I, I do know that, it, that they they more than likely, yeah, definitely like they'll put in these new characters. They make you love them, like Alexi from like Alexi from season three, uh, <laughs> and then they'll just kind of kill them off in front of you. And the, I think the the reason why they do that is because they don't have the balls to kill off the other main characters. Um, like sure, they they sort of killed off um, Hopper like at the at the end of season three, but. Obviously made it to where like oh no he's coming back in season four oh hey he's back so that doesn't count I mean actually killing off one of the main characters you want to kill it can kill uh, off somebody fucking kill Steve like he's cool but like he's had a good run uh, uh, Jonathan is not really doing anything uh. Yeah. So so yeah. When I, when I, the more I do watch it, it's just strange that, um, and, and season four, it seems like there are characters who are not, they're not given roles as much as as much as some of them that were in the previous seasons. Yeah, because like, like Will, for example, actually in the season three, what did Will do in fucking season three? He got pissed and fucked up his tent, but what else? <laughs> Uh, yeah, he was like kind of like the voice of reason in that season, but he, and then in season four, he again, he was there. Like, cause it, it was just weird to me because Will was like the guy, the person that they were trying to save, and then they have him back, and now he's just kind of there. Give Will a role. <laughs> yeah. Okay, shit, shit. Okay, Max, Max. Okay, and now now here's an example of each season introducing a great character, and of course, like they don't die, they keep going. Um, and of course, season two you had Max and Billy, and their brother and sister, and then season three Robin, of course. Now Max, in this season. <sighs> Fuck, she went through a lot of shit. I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> I don't know what the, the maybe like the actress who played her did, did something to piss off the Duffer brothers. I don't know, but what they did to her character was just I don't know, like a kind of uncalled for. Like they didn't kill her off, but they basically kind of put her in like a coma state. I'm like, okay, what the fuck are they even gonna do for the next season? And also what I didn't like about season four is that what what the other three seasons are, were good at doing was when the season ends, you you kind of have this feeling of that was awesome. And if the seat and if the show ends at that season forever, it won't be a big deal because plenty of it was wrapped up enough. But no, this that that finale of season four was just fucking like cliffhanger of the show. So yeah, 
I think, what was it? Maybe like the fifth episode where the, the Vecna was fucking picking on people. And, you know, the people who, uh, you know, had some kind of just something that they really regret in their life. Um, so it's sort of like a, <laughs> um, like Nightmare on Elm Street, but it can be during the day, uh, depending on where your mind is. Uh, so, yeah. He he tries to kill off Max, and he also he almost kills off Max. But then they save her right before she's about to like really like she's falling in the air. And they save her before it gets really bad. And during that, during while all that's going on, there is like kind of a montage of Max, like all all her. It just her through the past episodes. It's like you son of a bitch. You better not. And then and then she's okay. It's like all right. So I, I was. It was a fake out. But then in the finale, oh shit. They they just pretty much killed. Yeah, she's in a coma. But she they they might as well have fucking killed her off. Unless they're gonna do some like weird tri- time travel shit. Probably. Oh, everybody's back. But <laughs> no, it's, it's because they don't that. It, that yeah, I don't think they just don't have the balls to kill off one of their main characters who has been in there since season one. Oh, Mike is another one who didn't really do a whole lot in season four either. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was it was it was a fun season. It was just certain things like that that um, were strange. Certain characters not given as much attention as much as others, um, and of course. Like in season three, even though a lot of the characters are like kind of spread out in teams or whatever you want to call it, um, that happens in season four too. But there's never a point like in season one where they all com- kind of come together at the very end and then kick ass as one big team. No, they didn't do that this time. So it's almost it's almost like this is still isn't the end of season four. Like the season five might as well be just more season four. Yeah, Vecna's not fucking dead. What was those things walking around in the upside down? When Henry got f- flung into the un- upside down, there was already these weird like cr- creatures walking around. Or there, there was at least like one or two. So there were things that were already there. What was that about? Did that get answered? Did I like, miss something? <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, leave Max alone. That was bullshit. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, leave fucking Eddie alone. I think his death was kind of uns- unceremonious too. The only people that really kind of <laughs> had a scene about him was, you know, Eddie's. Um, was it dad or his uncle? I think his uncle, and then Dustin, of course, because Dustin, he's the one that. <laughs> The cares is a big reason why he's one of my favorite characters. Um, yeah, it, it was it was just weird. Um, Eddie going through all this shit, and then he seems to not get really a recognition as much for it, other than the people who already know him, Dustin and his uncle. <sighs> he was he's just a cool character. Um, he he was. Oh, it, it's just home to one, probably my one of my main favorite scenes in season four is the finale when uh, Eddie breaks out his fucking guitar to, to basically play. <laughs> he plays uh, the master of puppets to piss off, uh, to fucking piss off the Demigorgon. And uh, I think the Demigorgon and those little bat things. Yeah, 
yeah, the way that it was filmed was just super fucking cool. Because he, because of course, like it's in the upside down when he does it. Yeah, that was really fun. I mean, <laughs> he's he's very quote worthy, um, for sure. Does like literally like everybody leave after I started talking about Stranger Things? There's like two people in here right now. Yeah. Well. So I think that's the. I think that's about the stream. About the stream. <laughs> Um, yeah, Eddie's a bard. Yeah, there is a strong theory that uh, the uh, the Stranger Things is going to end with the first episode beginning, or that beginning part where they're just playing D and D. It's like the whole show is just them playing D. &D. I wouldn't put it past them, honestly. <laughs> Either that, or I mean, they're just like designed to kind of like mimic. D and D characters, I guess, in general. Still wouldn't put it past them. Okay. Okay. Robin was really good in this season. I mean, this season like wasn't really for you. Like, just at least watch it like for her. And Hopper, of course, he was really kick a kick ass in this season. Um, very gritty Hopper. Mostly him in Russia the whole time. Um, in Russia, why they are. They have uh, one of the Demi Dogs. Very big one, a very pissed off one. <laughs> oh, Russians. Russians. The reasons why we have more than two seasons of shows. So. I think that's... <laughs> fuck. That's about it. But yeah, it's uh, it's been great talking about everything has been talking to everybody good talking to everybody love seeing everybody's comments so uh yeah you guys have a great one and uh, fuck you kenny g